what is going on we're live uh thank you so so much for joining me uh there we go uh, if there's any audio issues let me know you can hear me well Al, let me actually just check on my end too i'm using the new mic so i'm kind of figuring it out still um because this will give me the flexibility to walk around, show you some cool stuff, uh, and the book as well. Uh, I don't know why I'm so out of focus. Hopefully, that'll improve. Um, and yeah, so I hear myself, which means it's working. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Scott, hope you're doing well. Hey, Chris, good morning. Hey, Buck, hope you're doing well too. My name, how are you? Uh, Kathy, hey, congrats on the book. Mine is supposed to arrive today. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. Yes, thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Jan's out, congrats on the book, Liron. I know it will do well. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, this It's not necessarily the most like um, business savvy product. I just really wanted to make something for you just to have all the artwork in one spot. Let me actually move this window here. There we go. Now I can... I'll look more directly, uh, but yeah, thank you so, so much. Buck, I can't wait to receive my copy. It's supposed to be here tomorrow. Awesome. Yes, awesome. Uh, Nancy, morning from Akron, Ohio. So excited. Uh, my book arrives tomorrow. Thank you so much, Nancy. Hey, Lel, thank you for being here. Jay Boo, hey. Uh, so yeah, we're going to celebrate. What I want to do is, I think, um, so I have the book here. Uh, we're going to flip through it, probably uh, not, not go over everything, but I think it's interesting. There are a couple of interesting stories behind a lot of the uh, paintings in the book. Um, a lot of like, you know, when, when you paint a scene, you remember everything about it. You remember the day, you remember what time it was, what the weather was like. So, and also the process itself. Um, and I think I talk about it in the book's introduction, but this is more about just inspiring, um, without trying to inspire necessarily. Um, but you know, you see it and you think to yourself, you look at the beginning, it is a humble beginning, I have to say, um, and then it slowly and gradually builds up. And I think there's a there's a significant difference uh, in skill from the beginning and the end. Skill and understanding. Uh, there's just a lot of things together. So hopefully that will be a nice kind of contrast and an interesting thing to look at. If you're at the early stages, you know. Uh, John, hey, how are you doing? Congrats on your new book, getting my copy tomorrow. Thank you so, so much. Uh, Robbie, hey, from Orlando, Florida. Thank you for being here. Dino Mold, congrats on your book and all success. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Jill, hi, Liron. Of course, I am. Hey, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Uh, so yeah, I have the book here. Uh, we'll let some more people come in. I'll probably pour myself some kind of a drink because I, I thought I made something ready. But I have, so here's the funny thing I still have the not for resale author copy version. By the way, let me turn on this front light, it'll make things look much, much better. I, I just have to plug it in actually. Okay, so let's give it a go. There we go. Now there's also front light. A bit of a high contrast. Maybe I'll just drop the angle a bit, like so. Yeah, that's much better. Hopefully it'll be easier to focus, oops, to focus too. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Ryan, hey, hope you're doing well. Hope everything is well with you. Sarasota, Florida, awesome. Uh, Crystal, hi from Naples. Oh, that's called Naples, Florida. Uh, Daniela, hi from Ireland. Cool. We have people from everywhere. Thank you so much. Dino Mold, hello, everyone from the Philippines. Well, I love the name Dino Mold. That sounds cool. Uh, hey, Pascaline, hope you're doing well. Uh, so, yeah, there are a couple of other updates, but honestly, I think this could just focus around that. So, the funny thing is, I was just saying, um, I have this not for resale version because I ordered an author copy. That's what arrived. Um, I'm uh, my my copies. I ordered a couple of them, uh, like normal normal copies after it's published uh, are on the way. Uh, they will probably get here uh, in about two a week to two weeks. Are the post offices things are slow here anyway, but now it's even slower. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, then I can ship some signed copies, which will be fun. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it in terms of just generally where I'm at with this. Um, I don't, I don't know. Like, I hope this book um, has a bit of a an appeal to anyone who's interested in watercolor painting. The more, I guess, inspirational rather than instructional side. 
Um, but it is really great for you, if I'm being quite honest. It's for the people who have been following for the last, I don't know, two years or so of this challenge uh, and who are interested, I guess, in my art in particular. Um, maybe it will build a more uh, wide appeal with time. We'll see about that. Uh, hey, Lisa, I hope you're doing well. Lisa M says hi from New York. Love your vids. Thank you so much. Hey, Steve, how are you doing? Steve Mills from, uh, says afternoon. Uh, Marjorie, hello. Greatest news. <laughs> Yes, indeed. <laughs> I'm going to make myself a drink. It's going to take like 20 seconds. Sorry about that. It's going to be a long stream, by the way, just so you know. So buckle, buckle up. So I just figured, because I'm with the with the mic on, I can just talk to you while I'm outside the room. I just I was quiet, but I could just say hi. Uh, so yeah, um, Trish, how are you doing? Congrats on the book. Yes, indeed, good news. Uh, Vanessa, hello there. Congratulations on your book. Love your work. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. So I think instead of um, looking at the digital version, uh, it will be more fun to look at an actual, um, you know thing physically we're gonna um we're gonna go through it and uh so yeah we're gonna do that in just a second golden pigeon congratulations sir here's some small gifts for you thank you so much let's let me go over the gifts here let's see what we've got i can't believe i'm drinking coke now i don't think i ever have during at least not lately um i'm just i'm done this day was a, was a long day uh, we have a cake. We have two cookies. Wow, that looks good. Um, that's a lot of good stuff. I like food, so yeah, I'm very happy. Is the book available in India? Uh, where can I buy it? Uh, yeah, it should be available. Uh, let me check real quick. Uh, there should be links in the description box, by the way, so it doesn't matter where you're from if Amazon works in your region. So I have links to... Uh, USA, UK, Canada, Germany, France, Spain, Italy, Netherlands, Poland, Sweden, Japan, Australia. So all of these uh, different Amazon sites where you can get a book. Um, I don't know what what version uh, does India use. There's I don't think there's a dedicated one, right? Um, Amazon India. I don't I don't think it exists, right? Oh, it it does. So why doesn't it let me? So why don't I have it here? It didn't provide me with a link there. That's weird. Maybe I don't have it there. Uh, yeah, that's strange. So whenever you publish a book, you get a bunch of links. And I don't have India here for some reason. Um, that's very strange. I think it should work, though, with other uh, versions. So if you usually, uh, if you normally, you know, how can you, maybe if you search for the uh, book's number, actually, let me share. OK, so if you search for this, if it is available, you should find it. Uh, but yeah. Hopefully. We'll see. We'll figure it out during the stream. Uh, hey, Hank, hope you're doing well in for a bit. No worries. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird hour, right? It's not the usual time for these. Uh, Lydia, hey, congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, Crystal, can't wait to page through your new book. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're going to do that in a second. And looking forward to viewing your book. Congrats from Canada. Pam, thank you so much for uh, sharing the book uh, in the group. Much, much appreciated. Uh, Paula, good morning. Congratulations. I hope you're thrilled with the results. Yes, definitely. Uh, so let me switch over to uh, the overhead camera. Let's make sure everything works. There we go. And I'm going to zoom in. You should be able to hear me. Let me make sure the mic settings have not changed. Yeah, we're good. So now, let's see here. So we have the same, uh, oh, wait, wait, the charging port wasn't connected properly. And now it is good. So I've had this issue where, oh man, I don't know why, maybe the, wait, let me fix that. It's um, kind of waving that the battery for the camera maybe isn't uh, connected. Well, let me see, let me check where it, where it charges from. We'll just make sure we don't have any accidents. I think we're good. I think we're good. 
it would show the battery now. So yeah, uh, I had this issue with the camera being upside down, but it's OK. I'm just going to flip through it, and you'll see it normally. I'm just flipping it uh, through it upside down. But let me uh, just make, do some uh, cable management here real quick. Sorry about that. There we go. We're good. So you're going to have two. Uh, and then I'll go. I'll be back to the chat in a second. Uh, I see. I see you, Didi. Thank you for being here. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, go through some of the first couple of pages here. Uh, let's see what it looks. Uh, it looks better like this, I think. So let's give it like that. And yeah. So just uh, kind of copyright stuff. Uh, this painting, you remember this one. I'm going to talk about it maybe later on, but just generally speaking, this was really fun to do um, because I finally, I just felt the need to uh, paint a complete scene. Uh, it has been, I was deep into the, the challenge and I was just kind of painting single cars. At some point, I just felt like I really, really want to paint something that is more of a complete thing where the car does play a role. Um, but but it's it's a the focal point, of course, but it's just a part of the composition. And I hope that uh, turned out nice here. The, the one thing that I'm very pleased with is that it ended up being a nice little, I even considered this uh, as the cover for the book. I ended up going with this new one, but I considered it as the cover because it turned out just like I wanted. Um, now, uh, hopefully the camera gives you a good look. Uh, the light is a little yellow, it's night, but don't worry, the colors are, I look at them in the screen, they're fairly OK. Um, if you have any specific paintings that you want to see a proper scan of, of course, it's easier than showing it even this way. So just let me know. Um, and by the way, if the audio at some point cuts out, let me know. It's, it will be the battery, but it's fully charged, so no issues there. Let's skip the intro for, for now. Um, I'll keep that for if you want to. If you really want to rewind and pause, you can read it. But I'll, I'll skip some of the text. I just want to talk about some ideas here. Um, so this was the first car. Now, a lot of you may remember this. Um, this was such a fascinating experience. So one of the things that kind of were on my mind as I was working on this was this was the first, um, the first car. So I really wanted to make something nice out of it. Um, so what you see here is the result of a lot of hard work, but also kind of missing the mark in a way. Um, so the thing that does make up for it, and I did uh, did write, I believe here, um, the thing that does make up for it was just how much um, attention I poured into this one, uh, and and that's something that just shows you how effort can go a long way. Um, let me see if I can um, maybe move this camera here. No, it's okay. Um, it just shows you how effort can go a really long way in in the result you get. Um, and just the time I spent on it, even though I wasn't able to nail the exact impression I wanted, think of, look at the, the tires, like you're going to notice later on the way I treat the tires here is so different from the next couple of, uh, <laughs> decades of the book, let's call it, it's, I know it's a weird word to use, but the, the big chunks of cars, usually I don't do it this way now, uh, but back then that's how I approached it. Uh, and it just shows you like a... I think a very humble beginning. Uh, now here are two paintings, same kind of a thing. And like, even my technique is very kind of lacking. Now I don't know why. It's almost like trying florals for the first time. If I can now kind of um, connect it to something else that I'm uh, maybe more fresh in my mind. Um, it was very similar to trying florals for the first time and kind of <laughs> messing things up, honestly, because um, I just didn't know how to approach the shapes and how to show them effectively. Uh, and the very same thing goes to this one. Oh, by the way, I didn't notice there's a print line here. Uh, that's not me. That's the print. That's that's actually Amazon. That's strange. Haven't noticed this until now. Uh, it shouldn't be in the final one. This is the again the proof copy. Um, same thing here. You know, it's kind of okay. I get it. I wanted to show the tail lights, and I kind of kept the flow going, um, but it just still wasn't you know the the thing I wanted it to be. Uh, so just let me zoom out here. So just to show you a bit of a humble beginning, and and let me uh, go back to the chat, read some of your messages, and then we'll continue scrolling through. Uh, I want to kind of pace it. Uh, so 
I'm going to switch over the camera over to this one. And what I can do here is add an extra camera. We'll have it here. So then we can have both of these at the same time. Uh, there we go. So just to show you a really, I think, humble beginning. Let's see if I can uh, play around with uh, high definition. Oh, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, sorry, we stopped here. Uh, Diddy, uh, hello from Canada, and huge congratulations. Thank you so, so much. Uh, very happy uh, that this can provide people with whatever I, I I'm not sure, even sure what, but just seeing it, I think, um, as a continuous challenge. It's not just a portfolio of, of an experienced artist necessarily of, or someone who has been painting for decades, but it is showing some kind of a process, progression, becoming more and more effective really by the day. Uh, so I think that's re really interesting to see. Uh, hey, Priscilla, I'm from Florida. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry, I'm blowing my nose. Um, Golden Pigeon, it's okay, sir. Thank you for all the help you have done to me because of the motivation and teachings uh, you gave me. One of my watercolor paintings got first prize in school out of many students. Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations. Uh, I don't remember if it was you who sent me some stuff on Instagram, but if it was you, awesome. I, I remember your work. It's really, really good. Um, really awesome. I, I had another point. I forgot what I was going to say, but yeah, so happy. Oh, yeah, I wanted to say. If for some reason you can't get the book and you want it, just send me an email. I'll 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 ship it. Um, I mean, I'll tell you how much it'll cost, but I'll ship it. Uh, I can also I have I'll have a bunch of copies here too. Uh, so if for some weird reason Amazon is not available or you know whatever, just let me know. Um, but yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. So I don't remember if you were the one who sent me because I have a few um, ongoing conversations on Instagram. Uh, and people are mentioning, you know, it helped them in school. And someone also mentioned they won uh, some kind of an award. So that's amazing. Uh, Littleton, <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Juan, hola, saludes para todos. Uh, Michelle, hello from France. Thank you for being here. Brenda, uh, congratulations on the new book. And Golden Pigeon, also, you started your stream at night, so I will not be able to attend it for much long. My mom is going to have dinner, but I will uh, wait. I'm very happy because of the book. Uh, thank you so, so much. Yeah, and uh, feel free to go get dinner. Uh, yeah, I know this, this hour is going to be really tough um, for some people. I know usually in uh, India, I catch them at really late night. Um, Australia, I'm not sure. Um, I think it's super late, like to... 2 a.m. maybe. Uh, so yeah, I know, I know. Hopefully, uh, some people will have to watch it after the fact, but hopefully enough people will be able to join. Uh, Nancy, what program did you use to create a book? Uh, I used uh, InDesign, Adobe InDesign. I'm so used to Adobe because I've been using Photoshop for years and Premiere Pro for editing. I'm a really good uh, Adobe customer. <laughs> I have a lot of their products. Um, InDesign, it's, a, it's really comfortable. However, <coughs> it is a, um, I did a yearly subscription. Uh, I think you can have, uh, what was it, Affinity, I think is a good alternative. I think it's called Affinity, uh, which is a one-time pay, if I'm not wrong. Affinity uh, InDesign alternative. But yeah, InDesign for me works really, really well. Um, yeah, Affinity, Publisher, there's a bunch of them. Uh, there are a lot of other solutions. I just started working on it. In, in, in design a long time ago, and I just continued. Um, it's very effective. You can do so many things with it, so many things that save a lot of time. So yeah. Um, by the way, if anyone has questions about publishing a book, um, feel free to shoot away or you know uh, just send me a message, email, because uh, that's the other side of it. That's uh, also a challenge uh, sometimes, even if you finish your artwork, but you're not sure how to turn it into a book. Uh, Henny, hey, hope you're doing well. Uh, uh, I hope you're creating. I really like your paintings. Uh, Pam, I enjoyed reading your comments with the paintings. I watched the progress over the months, and I feel uh, a connection as I went through it. Yeah, I think that's the huge benefit. So if you have been following me publishing them uh, on Instagram here, uh, it'll be much more kind of interesting to see the inside scoop on a lot of these. Um, I think 
as stories, of course, I published, I, I, I posted all of them online. There's the story highlight on Instagram. You can see all the 100 cars. But as posts, two dogs fighting outside, as posts, I have not published all of them. Um, and I think it's fun to finally see like in high quality for those who've been following and kind of seeing. Yeah, there are a lot of um, a lot of the more complex ones. I think it's really fun to see. Uh, Jan's art, the journey aspect of both your skill and interpretation of painting cars may very well be the best quality of the book. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, hopefully, you know, at the end of the day, there are a lot of people who have been painting for decades. I'm not one of them. I've been painting for about eight, eight to nine years. Uh, someone asked that on Instagram the other day. So, you know, I'm definitely not the most experienced. Um, I will say I'm very ambitious. Um, and not because anyone told me. It's just it's just how I feel. Like the huge painting I'm working on right now, that's just my ambition to make something huge. Uh, so the same thing kind of with the cars. Um, it's been very fun. It wasn't really gritty hard work. I really kind of let it carry me in the natural direction it carried me. Um, and I think that was the main thing that made it, you know, it was the easiest thing to persevere through. I didn't have to, to do any hard work. I just painted whenever. It took me two years, but who cares, you know? My name, are the paintings in the sequence of your completion for your challenge? Are the painting in the sequence? Yes, yes, they are. That, that's the, the exact numbering. You know what's so funny? That's a great question because you'd think that the... Like there's a way to order illustrations and paintings for a book. You'd want to put the best things, you know, to kind of pace it, uh, to divide it up so that there's something interesting um, in the start, in the middle, in the end. I have no idea why this turned out perfectly because you get exactly the amount of successes that I would want. Like it's it's the start is a bit of a grind, then car seven, six or seven, I don't. Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Car number six is a massive success. I'll show you in a second. We'll get to it now. It was a huge, huge success. Uh, and, and so you get something impactful for every stage of the book. But if you are patient enough to read, quote unquote, through it. By the way, I can make the light a little stronger like this. Uh, if you're patient enough to uh, read through it, uh, what you'll find is the, it's worth the wait. The the latter third is so much better. Uh, I've had a huge growth spurt there, a huge one. Uh, so you'll see. Everyone's congratulating uh, Golden Pigeon, and quite rightly so, Golden Pigeon. Uh, good job. By the way, I'm reading the comments on some of the videos, and like there's threads of people talking among themselves, and. I, you know how comments online are, they always eventually devolve into fighting over something. It doesn't matter how they start. I'm so proud to say I've never seen that on, on this channel. So that's amazing. The conversation just continues and it's amicable and it's polite and it's nice and positive. I needed that drink. Um, thank you so much, Chris. Uh, so, Pito, is your book only delivered within the States? No, no, it's a, it should be available basically in any country that has Amazon delivered to. Um, you should be able to get it. Uh, but again, if for some reason you can get it through Amazon, let me know. Uh, Diddy, way to go, Golden Pigeon. Yes, indeed. Nancy G, I'm familiar with InDesign and like it. Did you format it in printer spreads? Um, hmm. So do you mean if they were merged together? I believe they were. Yeah, because I wanted to see how the splash pages will work. And I'll show you. I'll show you now. Uh, JLS, maybe you've already. And let me know if that's what you meant. If you haven't, I can show you the file. You'll see. You'll know exactly how I did it. Uh, JLS, maybe you've already answered. But how long of a process is it from start to end of publishing? Are there guidelines or goals you strive for as you go through it? Um, not really. I'm just trying to design the best thing I can in terms of guidelines or goals. Um, I did do a bit of a refresher on Premiere, uh, Premiere InDesign, Adobe InDesign, just to make sure I remember how to operate it. Because if you know how to operate it, it will be much more effective. You can build basically a template so the new pages you add will have that template. Then you can change it up a bit. Um, but it wasn't that long of a process. It just depends on how much text you'll have, how much uh, illustrations and images and so on you'll have. I had the 100 basic ones and then a couple of others, you'll see. Um, I would say if you're really uh, determined to finish it at a good pace, you can finish it, you can finish it within you know, two or three months. Um, the disadvantage here was that 
when I ordered the proof copy, it takes a while to get here. It takes like two, three weeks, not only here, but just generally they're sometimes it's they're slow. Now, if you're in the US, you'll get it faster, but outside the US and the, maybe UK, Canada, they're slow uh, on sending the, even Canada, I heard they're slow. So you can wait for two weeks till they send it. And then you have to go over it, review it, make the changes, save them, and then uh, request another one. It's a long process. Um, but if you get it fast, you know, two, three months, this kind of a book, you can finish within two, three months, I think. Now, if you're talking about more of a verbiage kind of heavy, uh, like my how to sketchbook or how to shade, these took a couple of good months, six months, seven months, a bit more. Uh, how to sketch notoriously, I, I finished it really fast because I, I worked on it 12 hours a day um, for weeks on end. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so let's continue looking at some of the illustrations. I can leave this camera on here. Let's see. We'll go over them. You can't really see me, but that's fine. <laughs> you'll, see, you'll see my back. Um, I'm actually, let, let me full screen this. It's better. Um, let's go here. And then we'll continue uh, with you, Golden Pigeon. We'll get back to this in a second. Uh, so Let's continue. Let's go through some of these. Uh, so this was kind of, this gave me hope. Uh, it wasn't like the best or anything like that, uh, but it did um, make me feel like I'm heading in the right direction in a way, because um, I started experimenting a bit. I used this very milky, and you can tell it's a very milky kind of opaque paint um, to make the slider. It was too dark. So at least I started daring to try some stuff. Oh, let me zoom out just a bit. Um, started daring to try some stuff and you know make it uh, more interesting for myself at the end of the day this should be fun to you you know but this was the first real like yeah i'm, I'm on the right track um you see this simplification of the towers i finally got it um now again don't forget you know you look at this it's not like i've painted uh five paintings my entire life right this is after years of painting for at least six years of painting. So the progression can appear fast and actually was very gradual. But this was one of the first ones that I was like, yes. Now, car number six is very special because this was like a huge, uh, huge success. I even wrote here, um, <laughs> I can't read it because it's upside down, a major win basically. Um, now, do I, I just had an interesting idea. Maybe I'll find the original one now, but. Uh, let me see if I can grab it. Um, I don't even know if it's here. Uh, where did I put it? It might be here, actually. There we go. We got it. So, you'll get a kick out of this. There's the original. <laughs> I'm going to zoom out a bit. There we go. Original. Page. The print quality is actually pretty decent now that I look at it. Uh, but yeah, now you can really, if you really want to see the details, there you have it. Um, so look at also the difference in size. So if I zoom out a little more, see, uh, it was a little um, minimized a bit. Oops, sorry. That was my alarm. Uh, it was slightly minimized, but I think it's fun to see. Um, this was huge for me because this whole vagueness uh, is just the exact thing I was looking for. Um, not to mention, like, if you look at the cars in the background, those look really sweet, like this tail, tail light and how these cars are really um, implied at. Uh, that's not only like a good painting of a car, it's also a good composition to me. Um, and that was when I was like, okay, yes, something is here. And you can even see the logo, so the Suzuki logo here. Um, this was huge. This was really, really huge. Uh, I even got a bit of the white almost in the center here to really make this look bright. Of these small details, the shadow here on the wiper, um, just a bunch of stuff that worked. Uh, I'm going to put it, I actually have a bag here with all the car paintings. You know what, I'll, I'll just take, not all of them, but most of them. I'll just have them ready here. Maybe we can, uh, it'll be fun to kind of uh, look at them simultaneously for some, maybe not for all of them. Um, so this brings us to 
the next one, which is this one. Again, you see, you start to see some, um, I would say some courage, uh, some kind of freedom. And also, I think at this point, I realized like how to combine the backgrounds um, and make for a satisfying composition, um, make for a thing that feels whole. And I really was able to imply, you know, there's a building here and then behind it, some more details. I don't know, I really, really like the way this one turned out. Um, okay, so I have to talk about this one. Um, this was sent to me by Gail. Thank you so, so much uh, for this particular picture. Uh, there are actually two Gails mentioned here, uh, different ones, uh, but thank you, uh, Gail, for this uh, mini. This is a, a, just a, a crazy reference photo. That, the thing is, it, it looks very regular. Um, like, I mean, it's a beautiful car, right? But it looks like a, a kind of normal photo, but there were so many nuances in all of the details in the front uh, that were a big, big challenge. So I decided to tackle it black and white because of that. And actually, I'm quite happy with how it turned out. Um, so yeah. Um, oh, this is an interesting one as well. Uh, this was sent to me, actually, uh, a photo that was sent to me by Karen. Uh, wanted me to show to uh, show how it, I would paint this specific thing. Uh, what's cool about it is that it turned into, I think, one of my first kind of successes on, in terms of just the video getting views on how to paint realistically. So that's something I was really, really happy with. Um, let's see. Let's skip ahead a bit. Um, this is from the uh, um, washed over challenge, by the way. This is also from the washed over challenge. Uh, and I think, let's see, let's jump ahead a bit. Let's stop here. This is a nice little spot to pause at. I, I do want to um, talk about this one and this one. I have separate things to say about it. Now you can read the text, of course, maybe, but I'll, I'll make the screen small and then you won't be able to. Uh, not on purpose, I just want to uh, chat for a bit. Uh, so yeah, these two are very interesting to me and you'll see why. Uh, Golden Pigeon, sir, can you tell us about your story from the beginning of your painting journey till now and what are your future plans? That's a, a whole video. Um, I'll tell you this. Um, from the beginning, I think from the moment I realized kind of, okay, I want to explore the direction of art and teaching and sharing, um, the entire thing was very much just follow the next thing, follow the next thing. Yes, there were plans. Yes, there was a long-term vision. But looking back, a lot of the plans and the long-term vision weren't the things, weren't where I ended up. Uh, the things I kind of told myself that I wanted to do, and sometimes they would just end up not being that interesting to me personally. So I just not, not stick with it, so to speak. Um, there was no grand plan is what I'm trying to say. It was always following the next thing. Started with sketching, really enjoyed that. Did some urban sketching, but then at some point I was like, "Oh, I discovered watercolor." It was, you know, um, just it caught me completely by surprise. I was like, "I love that look." Um, more in the urban sketching angle, then I started really liking the more traditional watercolors. It was always just another thing and another thing, and basically just following what inspired me. Um, now I know a lot of people struggle with issues of you know being. A lot of their, like every, everything I'll say is opening up a bunch of tangents, but they try and they try and approach painting um, in in a way that is ineffective for what they they actually want. Um, they approach it trying to get something from it, um, whereas I find that. If I come to a painting process full, um, I don't need anything from it. I can just let it happen. The result is the best. And that's the thing that's been gradually guiding me more and more, um, very much so in the last year or so, year and a half, I would say. Uh, but yeah, maybe that's a good topic for a separate video. Let me star your <laughs> chat because I'm going to um, I'm gonna copy it, actually. Um, can I copy here? I can't. OK, I'll look at the start uh, message later on. Um, yeah, we can definitely discuss some of that in kind of a separate video. It's a good topic. Um, Jelro, <laughs> AO, I hope someday I'll be just as good as you're in watercolor painting. Yeah, you know, find your own thing within the medium. 
everyone's going to paint in a completely different way. There are as many styles as there are artists out there. Um, so yeah, but definitely, I'm in your corner. Um, my name. Yeah, I was thinking if it was on sequence, I'll be able to see how your painting progresses. Yes, exactly. Yes, that was the whole point. Yeah, I, I never changed the ordering. Yeah. Now, some paintings I worked on simultaneously, but I did complete one, then the other, then the other, and that's how I, I counted it, so to speak. So, yeah. Uh, Ryan, is there a digital version also available on Amazon? I'm getting the print version. However, I was just curious. Um, yeah, so I think I will uh, create a Kindle version. I, I know a lot of people are interested in that. Maybe you don't want to have a physical thing. Um, I'll, I'll make it happen. Uh, I don't know when, but it shouldn't take that long. Honestly, I think I could just kind of convert it to Kindle. I've, I'll have to, to see how that would work <clears throat> because the design's a little complex. If it was just text, it would be much easier. Um, but maybe I'll just transfer it one to one. Um, but I'll, I'll definitely I'll look into this, and I do plan on doing it. Um, to me, it's even better because I make more percentage-wise. The, the production uh, cost is, or the printing cost is much lower because there's no printing. Uh, I'll look into that. I'll look into that. OK, thank you for calling now. Uh, will it ring again? No. OK. Um, Karen, uh, congrats on your book. Thank you so much. Didi, I will order mine today. Thank you so much. Um, Zdex, can I buy your book in uh, Thomas Fersonski? No, uh, those are local stores. No, I, I mean, if they want to carry it, of course. But no, I don't. I don't. You won't be able to get it there. Just Amazon. Um, you know, I did, I did end up publishing through, uh, you know, in Spanish, for example. Uh, and that ended up with a Spanish publishing house. That ended up in um, in bookstores in Spain, Argentina, uh, a lot of places. But that is purely just me publishing through Amazon. So you know, I think if you ask them, they can order it because I did. Oh no, they can't because it's not for ex uh, expanded distribution. So no, the answer is no, unfortunately. Uh, but you can order it through me. So send me an email, and you can buy it through me directly. Uh, Red always gives me hope. Yes. Yeah, uh, I hope you enjoy seeing the paintings. Uh, when Scarlett, thank you so much. Uh, Juan Liron. Thank you so much. Yeah, you know, we have the same thing. This word you used, Enora Buena, we have the exact same thing in Hebrew. Bishato Vital, it's literally the same good hour, literally translated. I just noticed it a, a couple of days ago. Um, James, can we see the cover? Also, where can I buy the book? Uh, let me actually bring up uh, the cover here on the screen. Um, let me see. Do I have it here already? Because maybe just to show the, the cover here while we talk, so I can kind of refer to it. Um, books, car book, cover, new cover. Uh, so there is, yeah, OK, there's a bit of a smaller file. Can I drag it here? No, I can't. OK. I'll edit manually. Um, let's see. Yeah, I would love showing you the cover. Uh, there we go. Let me upload it. I'll show you the entire spread of the cover. Um, the front is basically the, you see it here. Uh, the front is basically the this painting uh, that I did share with you a while ago. Uh, and then the back. So that would be the cover. Uh, you can buy the book at uh, on Amazon. Uh, I published it independently. Uh, you will find the links in the description of the live stream. The first couple of links, you'll have all the different pages for the different uh, versions of Amazon. You can get it there. And thank you so, so much. And thank you to anyone who's getting the book and got the book. Uh, Judith, hey, hope you're doing well. Hey, Amit, how are you? Uh, I replied to a couple of your comments, I think, yesterday. Um, yes, Amazon, indeed. Every time I see you working on it, it's so inspiring. Thank you. Yes, uh, it was a great experience. Lots of uh, highs and lows. Also, at some point, I kind of put it on the back burner. Uh, but then uh, you reminded me here in the chat, and I remember Gail in particular reminded me, and I was like, OK, yeah, it's time. I, I mean, I don't have much work left on it, so yeah. Sometimes you um, 
you just put a project on a back burner and you forget that it's kind of fun. So you, you end up revisiting it after a long time. And that's how it is. You know, I don't judge myself for any of these things. Um, it's, just, it's not beneficial in any way. Uh, Nancy, your book is so cool. Thank you. Curious about what changes you may have asked for of the proof copy. Um, it's not so much necessarily the changes, more of sometimes that'll happen. So one thing that you want, you may want to change is the type of cover, if it's glossy or matte. Uh, you want to look at the size of the book, generally speaking, see that it makes sense. Now, a lot of it is me having to correct stuff. Um, so one of the main corrections, I think, was just text. I just read the text and I was like, okay, this could use improvement, this could use improvement, that could be changed. So I ended up changing the text. Um, some of the way the photos were organized, I also changed that. You want to look at the numbering of the pages, make sure that the, the, uh, the images um, are formatted and placed accurately. You'll notice the book is with bleed, meaning that some images reach the edge of the page. So you want to make sure there are no white gaps there. Uh, it's mostly for corrections that I need to make. I knew that I like this glossy format of a cover more. For this particular thing especially, it works better, in my opinion. I like their matte covers for uh, some of my other books. But for this type of artwork, glossy works better. Uh, everyone paints differently, but what I appreciate about you is how uh, you verbally explain the process. Also, feeling-wise, yeah, I, I'm fortunate enough to be able to explain things verbally pretty well. I didn't work for this ability. I was just, I think, kind of born with it. So yeah, that's, and maybe that's why I enjoy making videos and, you know, posts and talking about my art, because uh, not everyone's into that. Um, yes, if anyone's having trouble, just let me know and you can buy it directly through me. Ian, thank you so, so much. Really appreciate it. Cool us. Just bought one. Congrats. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. And I hope you'll enjoy them. Um, you know, it's to me, it's a nice thing. It's a nice experience to publish such a book um, because it's a different product than my usual stuff. So, so far, I think every product I made um, was educational, um, aside from the paintings themselves that I sell. Uh, the you know the courses the books it's all educational, but this is more of a just inspirational kind of thing. I think the audience for it is much wider than a lot of my other stuff. So if you're into painting in general or watercolor in general, I think it's a fun book to have. Uh, just to open up, look at some paintings. Um, it shouldn't even waste too much time. You know, I honestly don't spend a lot of time looking at other people's art, but I do spend a bit of time because I enjoy it. Um, so I'll, I'll either open up a book. I don't have too many watercolor books, honestly, but on Instagram for me, may, uh, mostly. Um, I just don't see a lot of watercolor books that aren't educational, you know, just um, out of inspiration. I do have Alvaro's book. Um, I think I have it on Kindle. Um, I forgot its name, but it's just a bit, it's, it's not that much of an educational thing. It's more of an uh, inspirational thing. Uh, Nita Engel's book. Um, I have a couple. But mostly, like how I get updated uh, with new paintings, I am seeing other people's paintings. The ones I'm sharing on the story on Instagram, you'll notice I've been sharing quite a lot of these. Um, it's paintings I really, really love. Uh, so I think if you just want to have something you can open, and look at, feel good, you know, <laughs> while you're uh, drinking the morning coffee or something. I'm really enjoying just looking at the book. It's very narcissistic <laughs> because it's my paintings, but I enjoy it so much. I've, I've had a much better experience with it than I imagined. I just It was so fun for me to look through, uh, so I'm quite pleased with it. Um, let's go with uh, Ian, and then we'll continue with the book. If it's not too personal of a question, how do you feel about the profitability of making art books? Can it be a career? Is it a side income stream, or does it end up being more for the love of it? Um, you know, generally speaking, it will depend on what you're trying to achieve. I did set out to make a career out of my art. Uh, so if something does not provide that in the long run, because I am looking uh, long term in my, at least in my kind of mindset, when I look back at it, I am looking long term, but I'm not necessarily making plans long term. Um, it's more like I'm sending out all of these good things into the world and I do get on a long term something back from them. But um, it depends. It depends if you're able to uh, to build 
an audience, a group of people who are into what you're doing. Um, and the more, the wider appeal it has, the more competition you'll have, but the more profitability it will provide. Um, this kind of a book, for example, I don't expect to be too profitable, uh, if I'm being fully honest. I mean, it is profitable. I spent time working on it, but it will, like, the investment will be returned. But I don't necessarily think it'll be the biggest moneymaker just yet. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, by the way, but um, it's a very personal thing because it's cars and water car. Um, I think it has a bit of a possible limitation uh, for people who just don't know me. Uh, now, I have a pretty big big audience. So if you, you I, I can tell you how much money I'm making off it. It's not a secret, by the way. So um, the copy costs $29. I make about six and a half. Um, that's after printing costs that about that's about eleven dollars and then you know um then i get sixty percent if i'm not mistaken um so that amounts to about six dollars now when you buy a course a how to paint course or how to draw course it costs twenty nine dollars twenty four dollars i make out of twenty four twenty two point five because it's just the either paypal fee or credit card fee um so this is much less profitable in that regard um the one advantage is if you are doing a good job on Amazon it, and it gets a high ranking, uh, it tends to kind of continue selling itself on the platform. That's the advantage. It's It can be an organic traffic source. So you don't have to do anything. That's just not one of those books. Now, if you look at something like how to sketch, a lot of people don't know that I have like 12 books on Amazon. This is the 13th, I think. <laughs> if you look at how to sketch, how to shade, um, all of these uh, people, how to, how to sketch people, all of these books, they have more of an appeal if you just search for Amazon for a how to sketch book, you find it. Um, so it's a much wider appeal. Um, whereas this, I hope will appeal to the people who wanna paint a, a masterpiece, honestly. That's how it's styled, painting a masterpiece. Um, it's a much narrower audience and that is okay. Uh, so this book is kind of a side income stream or for the love of it. But my other books, I could definitely say, yes, they did help me a lot with building my career around art. Um, not to mention if you um, if you sell the language rights and you publish it in different languages in different regions, so you basically get a paycheck from a publishing house uh, once a year. So you can really stack up on it and you can definitely make full-time income from it if you're doing a good enough of a job. But if you're just, and we'll continue with the uh, next couple of cards, but um, if you look at the finances of it, yes, definitely if I sell a course, I make much more money uh, on it. Now I do wanna look at the car 18 for a second. Now what's interesting about this one is when I finished it, I really did not like it necessarily. I didn't think much of it. Um, it felt kind of okay. But when I look at it now, uh, I, I have no idea what I missed. Uh, I really, really like it. Something about this subtle color balance uh, of, so you see there's a lot of browns and reds, and then there's a bit of a blue here that is more saturated and a bit of a redness kind of that is more saturated. Uh, and, and you know, it's a bit of an older car, which is fun as well, but like I gained a whole new appreciation for this car now while editing the book. Um, if you look at these different color spills here, there's a bit of a, I don't know if it's a granulation. Let's actually look at the original one and see if we can um, recognize what it is, you know? Will be interesting. So this is the original one, pretty much the same size. That's interesting. That's almost one-to-one, -one, I would say. Uh, yeah, that might actually be one-to-one. -one. That's crazy. Um, so yeah, here, you see these effects? They're so nice. Uh, and then these drops that I dropped here, here as well, uh, and that blue. Uh, I really gained a new appreciation for this one um, that I'm very happy with. Now, if you look at this one that I did mention, just showing how easily um, you can tell a story or show a detail, like this uh, symbol, Mitsubishi symbol, obviously, just three dots of white paint. Here's the original, by the way. This is fun comparing the original and the print version. Sorry, upside down. See, just three touches of opaque paint and you can tell the model or maybe just the brand, the company, sorry, which is really fun. 
Um, that's one of the coolest aspects for me. If I can tell a lot with a little, uh, I don't know, I just find it really, really fun. Um, this is interesting. So this is kind of a, this one and the next one. You can see I, I went a little colorful here, but this one in particular I like, and I do have a video showing at least one of them. I think it's this one actually, uh, which is 22. Uh, but 21 in particular was an epiphany for me. Uh, and I know it sounds funny because this wasn't that long ago, but this was the, the one of the first times it really clicked that I can fully go crazy with the uh, uh, colors and the values will kind of organize themselves. Uh, if if I if I kind of skip some of the highlights, you know, make sure to not uh, overdo it. Um, it. It's just so much fun, and you can just paint within the shadows. You'll get something that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so yeah, I really really like that one. Now, let's see what else you're saying. I'll kind of do it simultaneously. Uh, Eileen, thank you so so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I love your car paintings, and I plan to paint my own. That's awesome. Uh, Anti-hero, anti-hero, you are inspiring. Thank you so much. Golden Pigeon, oh, I'm sorry, but now my mom and dad both are calling me to go to sleep, I had dinner. Yeah, thank you for the updates. You definitely do that. Um, I have to go, but can you just give us a very small uh, room tour? There's not much to see here, honestly, just a couple of shelves. Maybe I'll do that in a, in a dedicated video. Um, yeah, definitely. Everyone should paint their own car if they're enjoying it. Thank you so much, Golden Pigeon. Much, much appreciated. Incredible book. Oh, man, I can, I'll have to translate this one. If anyone wants to translate simultaneously, sorry, Juan. Um, I'm kind of OK, but not. I don't know much. I don't have a really good vocabulary. This is a cool Mustang uh, we kept uh, seeing around our um, previous, apart previous, previous apartment, actually. And you know, here I thought to myself, oh, let's split the colors up, see what happens if I just use this strong, um, I guess this is a mix of a magenta red and a bit of a, a I think it's a new Gamboji kind of yellow. So it's a lot of warmth um, and then a blue and just kind of contrast them. And you know, a lot of the magic happens in not just having a con contrast of, let's say, temperatures in this example, but the nuances of how you establish it. Uh, and I kind of like the way it's established here. Uh, one thing you'll often see is the mirrors and the shadows around them. You will also see sometimes mirrors reflecting light. So instead of a shadow, you'll have a strip of light, which also looks really good. This window really tells the story of the sun hitting this area. Um, this was play. A lot of the reason why these cars started working was that I just allowed myself to play with the colors, to play with the ideas. That was a huge thing here. Um, and that's something I commented also in one of the questions I got on Instagram. When you see the painting process for what it really is, it's just play. It's just play. These two weird cars, <laughs> let's skip those. This is a really cool one. I don't know why I like this one so much. Actually, let me find the original here. It's a good reason. I think, and I, I talk about it in the book, I think it has to do with this stripe here, the way I put it in confidently. And it's just, you see, it's a mess, the technique here, but it works. I don't know, it works really, really well. Um, let's see, let's skip ahead a bit. I don't want to skip too much because I love every car here. Um, I'm going to do, so here's the thing. This one, for me, I don't know why the colors are really spot on here. Is something in their subtlety, it feels together. It feels like a whole. You get a bit of oranges and blues and uh, pinks and just cleaner blues. It all works in the context. It's something that I cannot explain really. And this is another example of one I cannot explain. Now, I wanna leave it up on the screen because I really like this one. I really, really like this. It. And it's one of my favorites actually. The book enlarges the picture, so that's nice. So I'm going to keep this one, and we'll look at a couple of more of your messages. Uh, and I can talk a bit more about this one. Uh, but man, I love this uh, Mercedes car. Uh, not the car itself. I know nothing about cars, mind you. But this one, I don't know why. Look at the, the Jeep or the, the truck behind it. Can you tell it's a truck? Can you see the kind of ring if, if you go Sorry, in this direction? go all the way there somewhere you'll see the ring above the tire right on, on the right side of the painting that is just 
Mwah. I don't know how I, I was able to connect it, but let me close the closet. It's annoying me. Let's move this here. There's not much really to see in this studio. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a video on it one day. Uh, but yeah, this, I don't know, it's perfect. I'm going to keep it in the background. Um, now let me, I don't know, can I translate? Let me translate. I mean, come on, we have time. This is going to be a long stream. And feel free again to drop, um, feel free to drop if you have to go or uh, and come back because it's, I'm going, I'm going, uh, I'm going for it. So yeah, it's going to be a celebration. Uh, thank you. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> I I uh, tried typing it the best I could. Google Translate. Uh, maybe we should all send paintings of our own cards to Iran so you can see the impact of his work. Yeah, definitely. Feel free to. Yeah, and thank you for the answer. I'm sure some of the younger people here are interested in becoming authors themselves. I appreciate the realistic answer. Yeah. And I think you can play it in a completely different direction. I think more people just want to author a book. And if I'm being honest with you, a couple of times in my life, um, and still from time to time, I think about you know um, penning just a book, uh, a novel, or something of that sort. Um, I'm not the best when it comes to writing stories, if I'm being honest. I tried. I'm OK at it. It's not really where my passion is, but once in a while I feel like writing. The, you know, I try the comic manga format. It's just so much work. Um, but maybe just the, the written word. Um, and I would say that most of the work you'll do there is the writing of the thing itself that will take longer to you know, build a story, write it out, write a first draft, fix it a quadrillion times. Um, and I think. Uh, if you really want it and you'll have the energy to put it in front of a lot of people, a lot of literary agents, work those connections, do your best to get to a person who can sell this to a publishing house, uh, you can make a very nice career out of it. Um, yes, you'll get like 10% of the um, you know royalties. 15 if you're a hero and you are actually well known in some way. Uh, but usually it's 10. Sometimes they offer eight, and then you have to uh, negotiate up to 10. Uh, I think that's kind of the standard. Um, but you don't have to do anything. No, no cover design, no formatting, no nothing, no editing. You just write the thing. Uh, yeah, you may have to rewrite some stuff. But generally speaking, most of the work is not you. Um, so yeah, that can very well be something profitable. Now, if you look at people like, uh, what's his name, George R. R. Martin, he was an author for decades, if I'm not mistaken. When he wrote A Song of Ice and Fire, that was he was already quite old. I don't know if 50s, 60s. Um, I mean, old compared to someone new is just starting out 20, 30 something. Uh, and yeah, so he got it. And he, was, he built himself some kind of a small cult following, I think. But that was when he really exploded. Took a while, <laughs> took a couple of decades. Uh, but I think he was still making a living off of it. Uh, so yeah, um, you know, I'm not really into necessarily, by the way, realistic answers. Um, I don't think you should let uh, real being realistic stop you. If you really believe that you have something, you have a good idea, you know, do everything you can to get it out there and make it a huge success. Um, but if it's possible, the, the truth is, yes, it is. It's very possible. And there are a lot of ways of building that audience today. You can uh, do videos like me. You can um, do text, you know, Twitter, X, whatever, write articles. You can do a lot of things um, uh, to build an audience and direct it towards your books. Yeah, but that's <laughs> hopefully that's, that's not too comprehensive. Uh, Rihanna, uh, Ryan, sorry, I think that's how I, I will pronounce it. So happy for you. Well done. Thank you so, so much. Bye, Golden Pigeon. See you in the next one. Good night. Yeah, it's super late there, I'm sure. Jan's art translation 100 pretty cards in watercolor book, literally. Yeah, I, I did my best. I tried. I tried to savage Grammy. That's an awesome username. Love that you share your enthusiasm and talent with us. Thank you so much. Uh, Juan Liron, recommendations for 
uh, painting black cars. Okay, yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Um, it will really depend. So there is no like recommendation, generally speaking, for black cars. Um, it will depend on a lot of things around um, around the car, the light and shadow situation. Uh, but generally speaking, black surfaces can provide a lot of interest um, if you're able to kind of see the whole picture and see it for a very for what it is, which is a very abstract sometimes thing. We'll look at a couple of these. Um, the Thunderbirds, Gail sent me the other Gail. Thank you so much, Gail, uh, for these. Uh, that is the perfect example of what you ask about. Now, if you look at what I'm showing you right now, there's a, a black truck behind the car, and you see the nuances there. I will say this. Let me show you. Let me go ahead and show you here, uh, Juan, specifically to answer your question. When you look at this black car behind, you can tell, right? This is where the tire is. Um, this is the mirror window. Hopefully, you can tell. Tail light. Uh, and I got quite lucky with it. It just looks good. Uh, the thing is, the challenge is that there's a bit more of a nuance, right? So you have a pitch black, but then you have like a dark, dark gray. And you have a slightly less dark gray. When you look at a white car, it's very easy. It's light shadow. Dark cars, there's a bit more of a nuance there. Uh, that you may want to capture. By the way, I think this is a better one because you see more of the more of the truck. Um, there's a bit more of a right. Yeah, there's a bit more of a nuance there, uh, and that can be a bit of a challenge. Um, but honestly, if you just look at the thing you're painting, all the information is there. I stand by this. I claimed this years ago. All you have to do is look. If you look, you'll see it. Uh, that's what I think. Hope that makes sense. Uh, let's see. Let's jump ahead a bit. These aren't as interesting, actually, in my opinion. This is interesting because you'll see the exact same one here. <laughs> I made up this color or that color. I don't remember. One of them was made up. It's either really gray or really blue. Uh, so this is one of the coolest things to me in this book is to show spreads. Let me zoom out a bit. Uh, sorry, you could barely see the car. Let me make sure you can see it. Uh, this car is the exact same as this car. It's the same one. I just based the painting on the same car. It's just gray and blue. Um, and what I love most is I can do these nice zoom ins. And then you'll see here, um, you can see the full scene. Uh, this one's larger. I actually uh, sold it in the, one of the latest auctions. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it got sold, right? Yes. Uh, so this one no longer have it here. Um, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. It's fun. It's fun to show. Um, to do these pages where you can really see everything up close. And one thing, so for example, talking about, let me let me go ahead here. I'll go to the desk and talk a bit about it. Uh, if you look at this thing, look at where the, the line, the, the uh, what do you call it, the gutter. Uh, it goes like this, right? The, the, you don't open the book flat. It's not too flat. Pieces of paper, they curve. And so a lot of the middle is lost. That's one thing to have in mind when you do spreads of two pages. You want to make sure there's nothing too important there. Now, I am showing you the full painting, of course, the next page. But in order for the splash page to look good, you need to be mindful of what you're putting in the center. And there was a lot of thought in how I placed it. Even though it cut some of the cars, that was the ideal placement to show all the details. Um, so just you know, talking about book formatting, it's definitely uh, a thing. Ian, I also want to author a book at some point, uh, just to say I did it. Yes, I get it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you know, I have a couple of projects like this. I did write a short manga story. It's not going to be profitable at all. I just posted it. It got about a couple of hundred views, a couple of comments. That was great. I did it. Check the box, and, and on I go. Um, and I think uh, if you really want to do it, you can start today. You know, you're, you'll write at your own pace. Um, I almost never, I no longer really punish myself for anything. Um, if I missed a couple of days of doing whatever it is I want to be doing, if I'm inconsistent with something, I don't really blame myself anymore for these things. I just move on with my life. And if I want to do them enough, I will do them. Um, and a lot of the thing that goes, a lot of the things that go into, let's say, a big project. Writing a book is a big project. Um, a lot of it is just doing it, just doing it. It's not even getting started as it is just sitting down and writing. 
uh, and just writing half a page. And then the next day, a page. And the next day, another half a page. The next day, you suddenly have inspiration. You write three pages. Before you know it, you will have a book ready. Um, you, you definitely will. Uh, and um, what book was it? What, what was it? I worked on this thing, and I really worked on it gradually, and I just finished it piece by piece. And I don't remember if it was this book, but I feel like there was another project where it was just gradual and it was and it accumulated. And by the way, the car challenge itself. <clears throat> you know, some weeks I didn't paint any cars. So I was on vacation. You know, I missed a couple. It doesn't matter because I knew at some point I will finish the 100 cars. And I did. Um, and even if I lose interest after 60 cars and I quit, so what? Move on to the next project. Um, move on to the next thing, you know? Um, so yeah, just saying, Ian. You can get started today. <laughs> uh, hey, paint or die, my friend. Uh, Kenneth, yeah, good, you wrote your name. I, was, I wasn't sure, I never know. So if someone uses a different username, I never know if I am doxing them by saying their name, but thank you, Kenneth. Uh, what's up, mentor and brother just ordered the book, so now it will be in Sweden for sure. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, and there's Amazon Sweden, I learned that. Uh, congrats again on the release, talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you so much, yes. And I wrote down our idea. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Um, I want to think about like the best angle to do it, but yeah, definitely. Um, and thank you for the uh, offer and suggestion. Uh, Marjorie, I figured it out. You run like to the Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars as a kid, at least this is my theory. Uh, you know what, Marjorie? I actually, I didn't have many, but I had a, a few. So I remember I had a drawer full of cars. Now, most of them, I don't even know where I got them from. Some, someone in the family just gave them to my parents. They gave them to me. Uh, maybe they're from the US. I don't know. I had a drawer full of cars. I love them. Uh, I didn't really play with them like vroom vroom, but I love them. I love them just geeking and playing with them. Um, I do remember whenever I would see, we didn't have Hot Wheels here, I think, but whenever I would see these small cars in boxes, like just the toys, I would love it. And I did want them. I did want some of them. I, you know, they didn't buy, my parents didn't buy many of them for me, but I did have a few that they bought me. Um, I don't I don't even know if it's a name brand or if it's just some Chinese knock uh, knockoff or something, what I, what I was seeing as a kid here. But yeah, I love these. I, I used to love these. But I know, again, it's so weird to say because I know nothing about cars. I don't, I'm not a cars kind of guy at all. I'm uh, point A to point B. Uh, I can I can see a car and say oh this looks it looks really cool but you know if anything I'm more into the if it looks like a very wacky car um, crazy colors completely you know custom that's the kind of thing I I may like more than you know talking about the engine and the the type of the model and all of that um, and also uh, like a really cool tech in the car so there's this um, Supercar Blondie, I think, on Instagram. She shows tons of really crazy cars, you know, cars that have reflective surfaces, cars that you hit a button and stuff happens in the car. That kind of a thing I like. But yeah. Thank you, McDonald's. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're cool too. Uh, Amy, congratulations. We're on thrilled for you and you're an inspiration for us, amateur <laughs> water colorists. I'll come back and watch the rest of this discussion. I have too many appointments, too little time. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Keeping busy. Um, yeah, let's go over a few others. Yeah, Judith, exactly. They were very similar to the Matchbox cars. Uh, let me see here. I just don't think it was this. I don't think we've had these here. Um, I know exactly what you talk about, what you're talking about. Yes, it was very, very similar, but it was, I think it was a Chinese knockoff, honestly, what we had here. Uh, but that's the exact thing. I Oh, I love this. I'm just seeing this now and I'm... Uh, Elated. I forgot about this, you know. I just now, as we were talking, I remembered. Um, let me show you what I'm looking at. Uh, let's see here. I mean, you know what it is, but uh, why wouldn't it just open the image in small, normal size? I can just zoom out. There we go. Um, I have to show you. Uh, share screen, uh, Chrome tab. Yeah, so this kind of a thing, right? 
this, you know, I'm just seeing this this chromatic. This is was I don't know why I was attracted to this corner immediately. Like this chromatic surface, I love it. And these small details on the uh, the handles, that is so cool. Yes, yes, you reminded me of something I've forgotten, honestly, uh, for a long time. Yeah, I love these. I still have two Matchbox cards. They're 60 years old. Oh, that's awesome. They must be worth a lot now, I think. Uh, these are definitely collector's items. Um, you and my kids had uh, here. Hot Wheels. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. We didn't have them here, but that's really, really cool. Uh, how do I? Yeah, OK, good. Uh, so let's look at a couple of others. Uh, yeah, really poco, poquito poco, really little. Um, I spoke uh, a lot of Spanish in so when I was in South America. I really got it. Um, I was able to say, I probably sounded really dumb, but I was able to say pretty much anything I wanted. Um, I, I get languages really fast, if, especially if I'm there and everyone around me speaks that language. Um, but now it's been years. You know, I was in South America in 2013, end of 2013, start of 2014. It's been a while. Uh, so I understand a lot, but I can't speak much. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what else we have here. And keep uh, keep uh, sending the questions in. I'm actually um, having a lot of fun uh, seeing what you're saying. Uh, so yeah, this one, the full version. I don't have the full painting here. It's one of the larger ones, but I don't have it here. This is a really fun one, by the way. Um, it's one of these examples, again, when you look at it up close, and I'm going to zoom in for a second, you see all of these broken shapes and lines, but it's still quite cool. And it still reads well, but especially if you zoom out, it looks real almost, I would argue. Uh, and that's the kind of thing, you know me, that's the thing I like most. Um, if I can kind of trick the person looking at the painting, uh, I think this one hangs somewhere on a wall, so I don't have it here. Um, unfortunately, I don't have it to show you. Um, but yeah, this is one of my favorites. I don't know, it just has a good sense of light and shadow. And I think it reads really well from up close, too. Um, this is really cool. So this I sold in one of the latest auctions here. Um, the car cleaning vehicle. We have this taxi, New York taxi. See how the color shifts a bit? It's a little more orange in the print. That's the original one. A little more uh, red, sorry. A little more orange in the original. Uh, but yeah, this one, I love it. I don't know why I love everything around these shapes here. The, this shape of shadow coming through from the side. That's a really, really cool effect. And I remember taking this photo. And, and by the way, I remember also, sorry, adjusted the mic. Uh, I also remember. I painted a large scene of New York taxis, and I sold the painting. It was one of my um, one of my best sales uh, a while ago. And thank you so much. I, I remember your name. I just want to don't know if people want their name mentioned, but thank you so much uh, for purchasing it. I really appreciate it. You know who you are. It's like a scene with a couple of taxis in perspective, one point perspective, really creative on the colors, and I think it turned out really interesting. OK, we have to pause on this one. I don't have it here. It's hung up on a wall. But we will pause here um, and talk a bit about um, what is probably one of my best paintings so far, honestly. Yeah, this is a bit of a hyperbole, but it is true. Um, Didi, it looks awesome. Thank you so much. Sephardis of La Espanol. Yes, that's right. Sephardi is the yeah, Jewish descent. Uh, uh, John, I hope that's whiskey with that Coca-Cola. I wish. No, I'll be, I'll be done if I drink. No, no way. Plus, we don't really have any alcohol around the house, so it's rare. It's rare for me to drink. Um, so, yeah, look, this, to me, I don't know. I tr keep trying to remember what it was like when I painted this scene. Man, this is a special one. This is really a special one. Let me zoom in even more. I know the video is a little dark, but it's fine. I just want to center it a bit. There we go. Uh, to me, this is really one of the more special ones. Uh, everything about this technique just came out exactly as I imagined it. Um, and I think the, the reason why it turned out 
just like I wanted was because I really made the most out of every area I worked on. <clears throat> and again, this wasn't something I was thinking while making it, but I think it was kind of a byproduct of how focused I was. Um, I kept, you know, changing things up and modifying here and really making sure to place everything I want. And then I also had the insight to let the water and paint do their own thing and just freely move. Uh, I wasn't trying to force them into a rigid shape. Um, and it just paid off. Same with the background. It's very abstract, but if you look at this car here, it just reads well. I don't know what else to say. This car in particular, if I'm, uh, if I'm, if I were to zoom in on that, I mean that is something special to me, and it's because of how soft it is, right? And again, if I zoom out, on the other hand, it's going to look probably almost, you know, quite realistic, I would say. Uh, so to me, to this day, if I do look at the paintings as a finished piece, um, you know, and, co and compared to the size, this is one of the more impressive works. I, it, this, the way the um, negative painting, the white gaps here, I don't know, this is perfect. To me, I'm going to look at this thing. Again, super narcissistic. I'm going to look at this page a lot. Uh, the only thing I really added after this one wash that I did everything in one go was these, these tail lights. Um, that was huge to me. Um, it really is one of these very unique paintings. To this day, I look at it and I, I'm just like this. How did I, how did I paint it? I don't think I'll ever sell this one too, by the way. It's just so special. You know, some paintings are like, like Divination, by the way. It's like, you know, the price I'll have to put on them to justify it. Because I really don't think I have any other painting that is quite like this one. I know it sounds so hyperbole. In some ways, to me, this is much more satisfying and impressive than working on a larger piece where I really work closely on the details. Because this, I put everything down in one go, and it worked out perfectly from start to finish. And that's how I uh, uh, des describe this one in particular. Um, yeah. And that's with no alcohol, John. <laughs> Jan Sart, I have to leave for my book study group. We're reading Doorway to Artistry by Esther Meek. It's a philosophy book, so it's uh, a bit obtuse. I'd rather stay in communion with artists. <laughs> Once again, no, you enjoy enjoy the group. Definitely uh, have fun. Uh, yeah, so this to me is one of the most like really, really special ones. Let's see what I can do here. Can I uh, reverse these? No, I can't. Oh, okay, whatever. Um, yeah, to me, this is one of the most special ones here. Um, and I'm going to stay on it for a while. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if is anyone here else is planning on um, penning a novel or writing a book. I'm curious. Let me know. I'll be looking at the chat. Um, and, yeah, and I will remind you, by the way, yes, you can uh, purchase this book if uh, you have Amazon in your country, which is the vast majority of the world, if you go to this um, video's description, you'll find all the links there uh, to every Amazon site. Um, I have here, let me make sure. Yes, I have uh, UK, US, UK, Canada, Germany, France, Spain, Italy, Netherlands, Poland, Sweden, Japan, Australia. These are the options I was given. Um, maybe more will pop with time. Uh, maybe this format isn't eligible uh, in India. I'll have to check. But again, feel free to contact me. I'll just sell it to you directly. No problem at all. Um, this is very much a passion project. Um, I will make much less per purchase uh, than I would on a digital course or something like that. But I just really wanted to put all the cars in one book. It just was... To me, it gives me a way. See this huge pile of paintings? Huge pile of paintings with irregular sizes that smells like watercolor paper and dust. And, and that's like, you know, not even all the pile. There's another one here. All of these together. 
And some of them I sold, some of them I hung up on the walls. This gave me finally a way to see all of them. And yes, you do see a progression. And perhaps you've noticed like this, you wouldn't get this for a first painting. And it's, I mean, you could, but you, if you compare it to the first painting that I showed you, it's night and day, the, the level of comfort, the level of understanding um, is so different. And let me, let me make that comparison. We will do that now. Um, uh, Hannah says, hey guys, can you uh, help me? I'm running out of time. I have to paint five pieces for my teacher and it's like a competition between students, so stressed. Just go ahead and paint a bunch of stuff you like. Just do it. Paint a bunch of different things or paint the same thing, like just animals, just whatever, just fruit, vegetables, whatever. Um, I love lavanda. I don't know what it is. Lavanda. I don't know if I just don't. I mean, it's a color, right? So lavender. Yes, I love it too. <laughs> it's a beautiful color. By the way, I noticed that I've been enjoying my cobalt blue and my um, kind of lavender lilac mix a lot more lately. So I'll probably uh, get more tubes of these colors. Zam, congratulations, the wrong love from South Africa. Thank you so much. Uh, Diddy ordered arriving this Sunday. Awesome, awesome. So let's make a bit of a comparison here between the two books, the two books, the two uh, paintings. So if I go back for a second to the first one, <coughs> just in terms of, and that's what you'd often see, by the way, with, um, with painters as they progress, just generally speaking, uh, you see the difference? So, I mean, you can like both. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying one is terrible and one is perfect. Well, I, I kind of am saying this is perfect, but whatever. But you will notice the difference, right? So the, the difference in the effectiveness of the lines and the shapes. You can just tell. Now, it's not even in the, this is how I painted this tire and this is how I painted that tire. This might as well have been a tire painted this way, but still, the overall level of immersion in the process and just letting the, the paint do its thing. I think that was the biggest growth, honestly, I got from this challenge. And as it progressed, the more I was able to bring in details while still maintaining this kind of freedom. So if you're looking at your paintings and they look very rigid or very like, like this, messy, right? Here's another one, kind of messy, rigid, you're uncertain about them. That is fine. Uh, I think it's like, uh, who was it? Like Picasso said it that it took him a while to learn something, then it took him a longer while to unlearn everything he learned. A lot of it is just to, um, from a very practical standpoint, to get out of the paint way. Um, and I think what I was able to slowly and gradually do is get out of the paint way. Let it do its thing. Um, so yeah, Zam, do you always do an underpainting for all your paintings? So this is a great question and a great timing because this had no underpainting. This was just in one go. Um, in fact, quite often, I will not do an underpainting. I'll add more to that, Zam. Uh, I will say that for the um, painting I'm, I've been working on right now of um, uh, uh, Ponte Vecchio in Florence, I'm working on a huge painting uh, of a scene from Florence. I didn't do an underpainting as well. This is, you know, it's a huge painting. I did not do an underpainting. I definitely don't do underpaintings for every single thing I paint. This here is another favorite spread of pages for me. This has a similar quality, in my opinion, to, you may be able to guess, um, just don't remember exactly where it was, this one. I don't know why they really remind me one another. Um, but I think this is like a more effective version of it uh, with the edges and everything. I don't know, it just looks cool. And this is another one. So this is a great example of a process that is very simplistic and kind of direct. The only reason it turned out this well is because I just loved this subject matter. And I don't even know what it is about it that I loved so much, but here you go. You can see it, the two of them actually here. Would you have guessed that this is actually cut out by the way? Uh, so this is how the painting is. This is, so if you have, if you're one of the people who have not watched this live stream, you will never notice, but uh, yeah, this painting is cut. I remember painting it. I remember just starting it on this piece of paper and it just missed a corner. And I was like, yeah, I'll just paint. I'll just do something real quick. Boom, ended up with something that looks really, really nice. And 
I had to complete this very thin slice digitally, which is so funny. Uh, but yeah, so this is a, a cool little anecdote about this one. Uh, and then this, to me, again, the reason it turned out so good is just I loved this car. I don't know why. We were in Georgia, the country, and I uh, I don't know if you'd call it Georgia, but fine. Whatever. The, not the state, uh, the country. I just love this thing. And I don't know why all of these, see these little bleeps of paint running. You can see it here really well. Uh, here as well in the background. Like, look at all these little effects here. Again, a lot of people watch my, um, I'm going to leave it here and, and talk a bit about it. Uh, a lot of people watch the uh, Stop Overworking Your um, Watercolors video. And they think, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm berating them or, sorry. I'm uh, berating them for overworking, and that's the way you do it. Here's an example of a painting that I, quote unquote, overworked. All of these effects in the background, I love it. And then I did this follow-up video on Joseph Zbukovic, how Joseph Zbukovic uses overwork to, um, to paint whatever, stunning, beautiful watercolors. Good. <laughs> um, Biano 3D, hey Liron, congrats for the book and for your painting evolution. Greetings from Brazil. Thank you so, so much. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, here's one more strange thing. So I do know there is a dedicated Amazon Brazil website, right? I think, I think it exists. Yes, it does. And I don't know why. It doesn't give me, that's so strange. It doesn't give me the Brazil option also in the, hmm, in the links. That's so strange. Really weird. I'll look into that. I don't know why. Of course, I am. I have to go. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Joseph, hi from Malaysia. Yeah, and everyone who needs to bail out, feel free to come back later. Uh, I don't know how long this stream will go. If people will stay here, I'll go for more than two hours. So let's see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but if, uh, if there isn't anything necessarily that people want to talk about, we can wrap it up uh, even earlier. But yeah. I'd be happy to continue streaming because this is kind of a celebratory event. It's actually been a long week, so I feel like, I don't know, it's part of my relaxation right now to, um, to just chill here, basically. Uh, so yeah, and I think it's really fun to see both the paintings and the, um, and the book. Uh, so let's see what else we have here that's kind of interesting. This is really cool. So sometimes people struggle with producing very strong, striking colors. Um, so this had me use the Pyrrole Scarlet really straight out of the tube, almost, just to make sure it shows. And I took extra special care to make sure that it really, really shows here. Um, so yeah, all of these leaks, a nice little flows. This I painted in one go. I don't remember where I started. I think I started here on the front, I think. Then I added a shadow, then I moved into this shadow, the towers. Um, but very often, you know, people talk about processes and um, do you know how you're going to paint something? That's, that's actually a key point. Um, some of my best paintings are those where I picked a spot on the photo or the scene just started from there and kind of painted outwards from it. Um, and whether I did a drawing before a sketch or I haven't, that's irrelevant. It could be either or, doesn't matter. But a lot of, I don't know why, it's something like, again, throwing yourself in the water and you have, you're forced to get wet and just, you know, get things uh, solved, solve all the problems. Um, I have a video planned out that I think a lot of people will appreciate. Um, kind of in the vein of how there is no really, um, there is no watercolor process or watercolor method. Um, and it's all about play. You will see. Um, I will show you kind of like the video I did where I start a background with a completely wrong color, just to prove it doesn't matter if you get everything wrong in the beginning, you can fix it. Um, you'll see. I'll show you how you can edit pretty much anything on the fly, not so much to tell you here's a technique to use, but more to show and demonstrate that it's all play. It's all just free play. You play with it, 
like kids play with paint and art supplies just by freely painting whatever you want, however you want, choosing your subjects, just enjoying yourself. Um, that I find leads to my best results. And this example here, this tractor that we saw also in uh, Georgia, there's, um, it's a bit of, um, it's funny, both the, the cars here you see, one of them you barely see to the side. They're both from uh, Georgia. The previous page was also cars from Georgia. Um, and I think it's something there that, that I recognize in a vehicle and just makes me want to paint it. Uh, and that is enough to carry a painting. So that means, you know, you, sometimes maybe you can relate. Did it ever happen to you where you paint something and you feel like you put a lot of effort into it and you were a bit meticulous in how you did things, but somehow at the end, it doesn't read like a, a piece of art. It almost is like just a lot of details that some parts look good, some parts maybe you're not as happy with, but it doesn't read as one cohesive unit of art, so to speak. Um, that's when this kind of magic comes into play, I find. Um, it just makes it look like a something that's complete. It's hard to explain. Hopefully, I was able to. Um, found the things I'm uh, thinking about. Uh, Marjorie, I want to add my congratulations. Uh, the how and why has been most interesting. Glad I managed to get here for that part. Yeah, thank you for being here too, Marjorie, by the way. Um, and thank you for all your support. I, I um, am super grateful, by the way. The oh Man, I've been using so many... I'm going to leave the, the message open. I've been using so many um, different blues that I discovered with uh, Mission Gold. And, and just the cobalt number two is so awesome. That's the one I've been... I need to get a couple more tubes of cobalt. Uh, or maybe I'll, I'll maybe I'll change it because cobalt is so is so disgusting uh, and so bad for everything, pretty much the environment and everything. Maybe I'll replace it with some kind of a lilac-y, lavender-y kind of color, um, either ultramarine with white, or I'll mix phthalo blue with white to get the same effect. You know, uh, Zem, I also have to be drawn into a subject before I paint it; otherwise, it feels like work. Exactly, and you know what? Um, I don't paint anything that feels like work now. In the past, I would have, um, but I think I haven't for at least a year and a half. Uh, if it feels like work, I'll just stop, and that's okay. It just didn't happen for a while now, because I know now to recognize before I get started what would uh, be a good potential and what would feel more like. The way you describe it is perfect, by the way, like work. That's exactly it, and nothing I do feels like work now. Uh, Arthur, congrats, Liron. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Your art is wonderful, by the way. Way to go. I really like your direction. Uh, so let's look at uh, a couple of more here. I'm leaving the messages open so that I can see and pick up the same place I was. So yeah, this was from Georgia. This was from Georgia. This is really cool. This is a bit of an underrated one. I actually have a video on painting this one. Uh, didn't get many views, but that's fine. Uh, I just think the technique there is really good. Like, look at this. Nice little fade. Uh, I think I should have it here. Yeah, there we go. <coughs> this one's tiny. Like, you have to understand these paintings, some of them are tiny, tiny paintings. Um, where is my ruler? I think it was here somewhere. I have another one. I just want this one. Yes, there we go. I want this one because it has uh, inches as well. So this is seven and a half, 15, uh, 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 12, oh, sorry, I can't read the centimeters this way. I have to go that way. 19 centimeters by nothing, like 5.5 5, 5 inch, which is, I don't know, 14 centimeters. This is a tiny, tiny piece of paper. Uh, but I really like the way this area especially turned out. Um, I don't know, it just works. Look at this tire. Just that um, gentle hand guiding the paint and kind of letting it do its thing simultaneously. That was a huge one for me to just let go of the need to control the paint all the time. And we've come to, once again, one of my favorite spreads, Car 50 and 51. These are special, both from uh, Georgia as well. 
Now, the thing that really attracted me to this is just these funky colors. Now, I do actually want to show you the scans. Let me see if I can get those real quick um, because I do want you to see the colors clearly here. Um, this is just, I don't know, it's something special. Uh, let me go ahead. We'll get these real quick. Don't worry. We'll get these quick. Um, so I do want to show you the bright green. And I've, sh I've shown you this, uh, these a couple of times. But I don't know. I think it's worth looking at. So we have uh, car 50 and 51. Let's upload both. Um, the green, the green there, the way it contrasts with the red, that's what the car looked like, uh, is something special. Um, I also wrote down in the text there, this was one of the first times I used um, opaque paint, wet and wet, very uh, freely. So if you look at this, for example, look at the tires. Uh, you can really see it there. I just let the paint run into, you know, the, the, the wet area, kind of do its thing. The front of the car, I think, reads really, really well, too. I honestly like the way it looks better in the book. Huh. Interesting. I think the colors uh, do it more justice. Let me, let me see here, car 50. Yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. So this one <coughs> really went for it once again. I don't know, it's these works that I just go for it end up looking the best. And this one as well with that kind of uh, fumes, not fumes, like um, <laughs> pollution coming out of the exhaust. Um, the card is really hinted at on the right side there. And uh, I don't know, this is something I always enjoyed from the moment I tried it the first time, which is, I think this was one of the first moments, just splashing the opaque paint wet and wet. Um, I don't know why, it just looks so good to me. Uh, and it's a look I want to keep developing. Uh, yeah, my pleasure, Arthur. Uh, Marjorie, phthalo blue with a touch of cerulean blue will get you close to cobalt blue, at least with Daniel Smith. Cool. Yeah, I have some cerulean. It's a bit of a harder paint. I also have cerulean turquoise. It looks very interesting and close, uh, but it has a bit more of a greenish tint. So I'm, it's interesting. I'll try it out. Oh, Didi, thank you so much for the super sticker. Thank you so, so much for the donation. Much, much appreciated. Uh, thank you for purchasing the book, too. That's a double uh, thing for, for me. So thank you so, so much. Really appreciate it. And I really hope just everyone who gets the book will have fun, you know, holding it, looking at it, um, looking at all the photos. I chose the, you know, part of the, oh, by the way, talking about formatting. So Amazon has, now uh, let me, let's nerd out a bit on paper. Um, uh, is it uh, pa uh, paperback? Um, So they have four paper types. There we go, print options. Um, so yeah, so you have, of course, black and white. Then you have color. Now, for color, they have standard color. And then they have premium color. So I went for premium because it just looks better. It made the uh, print costs higher, uh, meaning I just get less of a percentage. But it's worth it. So the reason I say it is when you hold the book, you'll see the quality is if it matches, you know, the, the the copies I looked at. And I think that they're, in terms of colors, they're good. They're pretty much uh, the same. Um, you will see. It's just fun. You see everything. You see all the details. The resolution looks really, really good. Uh, Didi, congratulations again. Sorry, I have to go. Doc appointment. So, yeah, no worries. No worries. This is a long, long uh, live stream. Feel free to dip in and out. Um, so yeah, I wanted to go for high quality. Hopefully it shows. Um, if I just uh, zoom in for a second, let me show you here. Just zoom in uh, on one of them. Let's go on this with this one. So you see, um, the print quality is pretty good. I'll hold it up close. Um, when I compare it to the original paintings, uh, it looks pretty much as rich as them. Uh, so I'm quite pleased with it. Some colors shift just a bit, but that's fine. I actually like these better. Uh, it's a very minor difference, but uh, yeah, it's probably easier to see in real life. But like this, of course, if you hold the actual painting, uh, the resolution is reality. But um, when you look at this, yeah, to me, that is a really, really good quality. You can see it here. Uh, so hopefully uh, I'll, I'll leave it, let's leave it zoomed in like that for a couple of more minutes. Um, to me, this was um, 
just how I imagined it. I was a bit worried because you never know um, if the quality will be um, good enough. I'm just looking for something to place on it to keep it in place. Will I take the risk and place this thing here? There we go. Um, yeah. So I really wanted to make sure it looks good and it feels good. So you'll um, have a great experience looking at it. Uh, Nancy, will there be another 100 paintings of, of whatever in your future? You know, I played around with the idea to kind of uh, troll everyone. I'll keep it. I'll keep it. Just, just if you remember in uh, April's Fools, there may be a prank coming up. I played around with a couple of ideas. Um, there isn't, let me think, what have I been in, really enjoying uh, lately to paint? I don't have something that I would like to do a hundred of right now. Um, something like shoes sounds fun. And then I can take a bunch of photos of different shoes of friends and family. But as of now, not really. Um, I'm kind of more focused on doing big, impressive paintings. I feel like there was there was a pretty significant growth spurt in my skills. And I've been really enjoying um, <coughs> painting some more complex scenes. Um, the kind of scene that just the choice itself is inherently um, impressive. Uh, it has a potential to create a painting that is very, you know, just bombastic. Uh, lots of small details, lots of, um, I think at some point I'll kind of find a way to bring the best of both worlds, both a very spontaneous, um, loose process and a very realistic result. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, but you know what? Definitely there could be a hundred something. I don't know. There could be something like that. I'm sure if I do a hundred flowers, I'll get much better at painting flowers actually. So maybe that's a, that's an idea just for me, you know, not even uh, necessarily as a project or to consolidate into something, but just for me, uh, maybe private, not private, I'll share some of it, but yeah, it's interesting. Nothing really pops that, that compels me to really try it out now. But it will come in the future, maybe. Yeah. Judith, which brand watercolors do you use? Yeah, I have everything. Daniel Smith is one of the ones I have a lot of. Uh, Mission Gold, I have a lot of, thanks to Marjorie. Um, some Windsor Newton, Shinhan PWC, some Schmincke you can find here and there. Um, you know, I'm very agnostic when it comes to a brand, to the brand. Um, which doesn't make me, it doesn't give me a good potential to be a brand ambassador. I wonder what brand ambassadors, like how it works and what they get. And are they forced to just use the brand's materials? Because uh, I've been thinking about it. Let me zoom out a bit. I want to show you more here. Um, but I've been thinking about all the people uh, that are ambassadoring. And you know me, if it, if it hurts my, um, my freedom, <laughs> I probably won't be able to do it. Um, but yeah, I'm using everything. I'm so, so I don't know, bad at sticking to one brand or uh, good at just using whatever I have, honestly. Um, and you know, people send me stuff. I just use it. I use up everything that people send to me um, until, you know, if I'm left with just one color that I dislike, maybe I won't use that. But I usually find practical uses for every color. I'll just do a monochromatic with just that one color. It will still look good. Uh, so yeah, I just use whatever I have, which is a bit of everything. And I'm quite grateful to Schmincke. Very early on, they sent me a lot of uh, paints and uh, tubes and pans. I sent them an email saying I would like to show their stuff. They just sent me a bunch of things. And it was when the channel was um, not not tiny, but still smaller. Uh, so I really appreciate that. Um, I think that's pretty much the only uh, Death Rosa Gallery also. They were great. I mean, it was one of their... Um, I wasn't a proper like person from Rosa Gallery, but a person working with them. But I think Schmenka as a brand is one of the only ones that really just were super cool and sent me a bunch of stuff uh, <laughs> in the car book. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna spoil my my other ideas and prank. We'll get to it maybe in the future. Looney cool one. Where do you get uh, uh, scrap high quality watercolor sheets? My store only has sketchbooks or pads. Interesting. Um, yeah, so I have a huge roll of Arsh, 10-yard roll. I kind of work at it at my own pace. This huge painting I'm working on, 
took up a lot of it, like two and a half meters on 70 centimeters. Um, but generally speaking, <coughs> John uh, ever so kindly sent me a lot of sheets um, and they are lasting me. You know, they're, they're, I have a lot of them. Um, I'm going through them, but but yeah, I have a lot of sheets uh, that I cut. Honestly, in, in my local art stores, I used to buy a lot of sheets too. Um, I think it really is a hit or miss. Some stores are really strong when it comes to paper and some are not. And you can immediately tell. Usually the stores that are actually good at it um, have a section dedicated just to paper. Uh, and then they have like tons of drawers with sheets in them. If you can't find it in one store, I just, you know, go to a different one completely. You can ask if they can um, if they can uh, order it special. Of course, you can order online. So I got my uh, Arsh roll online. That's definitely something you can do. 10 yard roll of Arsh, that's all you really need. It comes in a big box. Um, yeah, and it's pretty cost effective. I paid for it about, I think, two, or US, let me calculate it real quick. Including shipping, it was about uh, um, USD, 200 USD for a 10 yard thing. Makes sense. I used to buy sheets that were 56 by 38. I think that was a size for, th for about 10 bucks. So yeah, I think that's that if you can't find it in a local store, try another one. If you can't, Amazon is your answer. <laughs> Just like the book, the cards book, Amazon has everything, uh, including my books. It's so funny. They have, they really have everything on Amazon. They just made it the easiest. Uh, but Cliron, what did you use to get the digital images of uh, your paintings for this book? Um, so I have a, an HP DeskJet, 3835. Uh, very simple printer. Uh, we saw in some kind of a Facebook marketplace ad for a printer that the company was getting rid of, like an office of some kind of a high-tech brand. They bought a bunch of new printers. They were like, come pick this up and take it away for free. So we just went, picked it up, got it. That's a printer I've been using for three years now. Three? More. More than three. Like five years now. Four or five years probably four years now, a good four years. Uh, and it has a scanner in it and the scanner does a good job. It scans uh, up to 1200 DPI. Um, it scans in color, the colors look good. It's just a little weak on the blues. Sometimes I have to edit those back in uh, just to make the, the blues more saturated. But other than that, it's pretty good. Now, some of these paintings are big, like Car 98, if I'm not mistaken. That's the Suzuki Vitara blue one. That one is a big, it's like an A2. I think it's an A2 size. Uh, that I scanned in parts. And a lot of these I scan in parts. If the piece of paper is too big, I scan it. I move, I, like this is the scanner surface. I'll place it and I'll scan another area and another area and another and another one. If, anyone here has Photoshop, there's a, an awesome feature that lets you merge automatically. If you have a bunch of pictures of the same thing, just different areas of it, photo merge will do it instantly, very easy to use. Um, that's how I make it into a digital photo. I then color correct, make sure it looks true to the, to the original. There you have it, I have a picture of high quality scans in 600 DPI, not 1200, I'm not crazy, I'm not a lunatic to have huge files of photos. I don't need that. Some people do, I don't. Um, but 600 DPI is more than enough. 300 is per print. So I scan. The simple answer is I scan them slowly but surely. Uh, and you know, a lot of people say, what do I do if uh, my scanner is only A4 and I have something A3? <laughs> Be creative. You just scan it in a bunch of areas. Some scanners may make it harder to do, but most it's possible. Now, if you have something really huge, um, the only real stipulation here is that if I rotate the painting and scan it, there is an overlap in the center. Some paintings are so darn huge that you just cannot scan the entire thing because let's say you have something that is two on two, two by two meters, right? There's no way you can get the center of the painting into the scanner. That kind of a thing you can go to a store and they place it in this roller thing that just scan, rolls it in and scans it. Um, 
that is uh, how I scanned my divination painting. Now let me see here a second. Okay. Um, Sharania, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, Juan, just as book which Alvaro Castaneda wrote in Godskill, right? Don't put me in the same sentence. That's embarrassing. Um, yeah. Uh, honestly, I think I think my work is uh, pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and a lot of people like that I say it. So here, here we go. I said it. Uh, I think a lot of my paintings are uh, up there with other artists for sure. Um, I do think there's a lot of experience that goes into it. So there's definitely a reason why some artists are at the top. Um, but I think at some point you kind of realize that there are others as good as the artists. And I'm not saying that's me necessarily, but like at some point it's like, oh, wait, this artist is actually as good as these artists that we've been all kind of worshiping for a while now. So what gives? And then the market fixes itself. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's a reason these people are there. They have been, um, forget about time. Uh, they've been fully dedicated to it. If I'm not mistaken, Joseph's book, which mentions in many of his uh, products that basically painting <laughs> to some point ruined his marriage just because he was so all in on it. Uh, now, I think he's, from the pictures I'm seeing, I think he's uh, happy now in a relationship. I'm happy for him. But yeah, it's, it's, it's something, you know, it can consume you. And he's definitely one of those people that completely allowed it to consume them. And he says, I didn't learn from anything. There was barely any DVDs. He developed everything. So he kind of grew it in a very insulated manner, which is why his art looks so unique to him. Now, there's a lot of copycats, so to speak, but his art is his art, no doubt. You can tell. Um, same with Alvaro Kessene. You know, Alvaro did do this from a very young age, too, had um, very professional guidance. But also, um, I think at some point, that could be to a detriment. And I believe he knew how to move on from that and build his own uh, empire. So yeah, but thank you so much, Juan. That is, <laughs> that is very, um, that's a huge compliment. Thank you. Um, I'll probably be a bit underrated for a while before I'm overrated. Hopefully, I'll never be overrated, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, Zishan, well, I guess this is a random question, but how do you recommend starting watercolor? I've gotten paint, paper, and brushes, but I don't know what I should be drawing. I've just been following a book. Uh, see, that's the that's a big part of it because you've been following, and uh, at some point, it's time to stop, follow, and pour yourself another drink. No, I mean, and <laughs> and paint for yourself. Uh, the one thing that I could have started earlier, and I didn't, was just painting more for myself. Um, at some point, I realized how much of what I'm painting is something I really, really love and enjoy. How much is something I care about? Now, the quickest hack to get over it is to paint something you care about, something very personal to you. It could be something you arrange yourself. So, like, let's say you have a spot in your um, at home that is hit by direct sunlight. Maybe you have that kind of a spot. You place a couple of things there, like an orange or a book or whatever. Take a picture of it yourself. Place something you care about, maybe. Could be even your phone. <laughs> and paint that. And I'm pretty sure interesting things will happen from doing that. See, the thing is, when you're just following, there is not enough of a drive or fascination with the thing you're painting. There is fascination with the technique. There is fascination with um, maybe the, the process. But to have a subject matter capture you fully, that's what usually leads to the best results. And the way to have that happen is to actually use something you care about. It could be your shoes. I painted my shoes a short while ago. It could be you know anything else, a family member, a friend. Um, it doesn't matter how hard the subject is to paint. I don't care about any of that. It's OK if it's technically outside of your league. A portrait isn't an easy thing to paint, but do it. You'll see. It will bring out something much more interesting. There is no getting started. Getting started is also an illusion. You just, you're always, either you're, you've started already or you never start. Um, and I think you can be started already if you just go ahead and paint the things you care about, for sure. 
Marjorie, every brand of watercolor has its own properties in order to make WN travel as core. I would wind up with multiple glazes, so don't choose one brand, just my idea. Yeah, I'm more into like what colors I like, and I mix and match those. I'll usually end up um, not using 80% of the colors on the palette, just using the same 20, the Pareto principle, the same colors again and again and again. Um, just because they work for me, I like simplicity. Um, I will mix a huge variety of, of colors, different colors, but I do like the simplicity of having a few that I use to mix those. And I do like the simplicity of having this neutral tint or any charcoal black or neutral black that uh, looks very good and makes makes it very easy to darken fast or to get the effect I want fast and easily. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that is definitely what I enjoy, um, for sure. Mix and match completely. Uh, Pondfish, hey, Liron. <laughs> I love, I love this uh, name, Pondfish. And I love that. I don't know what's in your picture, but it's a really cool pixel art. Uh, I'm totally new to painting. I really appreciate your way of explaining the process and technical aspects. I've learned and improved a lot more than I expected. Just by the book. Thank you so much. Thank you for the kind words, too. It means a lot. Um, and I'm happy. I think, again, this is just something I have. Um, it's easy for me to describe things verbally, and that, that usually leads to people understanding. So um, didn't do much um, to earn that ability necessarily, and I, I just feel grateful and lucky to have it. Uh, Zishan buying drinks right now. Enjoy yourself. I should, I should definitely have a whiskey in that Coke. Uh, Gina, good morning. Wish I was uh, here earlier. So good to see you. No worries, Gina. We're at, you're, you've actually joined in one of the coolest dull spread of pages here. Um, and we'll, we'll soon continue looking at some more. And I'm kind of um, showing the original paintings sometimes side by side with the book. And these all have interesting stories to them. Uh, Diane, your car paintings are awesome. Liron. Can't wait for you to paint a frog eyed sprite. Just yesterday. Okay, so I have a million tabs open on my Chrome browser at any given moment. Yesterday, I went over them and closed a bunch of them. One of the ones I closed, I had a Google search open for frog-eyed sprite. And then I just took it, wrote down in my uh, live stream notes to do, and closed the tab. So that I have one last tab open, but I don't forget. So that I don't forget to paint a frog-eyed sprite. And I love these. These look so wacky. I'll be happy to do one. Just a matter of, uh, you know, I'll see a picture and I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to paint that. Um, I like these things to kind of appear. Um, I don't force them. One day I'll just feel like, yeah, today is the day I'm going to do it. And then I do it. Uh, Dina, your pretty background looks like my Paul Rubens palette. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, so let's continue. Let's look at some more uh, paintings. I love Paul Rubens, by the way, uh, paints. They've served me really well. Uh, so yeah, we've looked at these two. Let me just give you a zoom in uh, to those who joined. Car 50 and Car 51, which are big uh, landmarks in me allowing myself to more freely use opaque paint. Here's the original one, by the way, side by side. Um, <coughs> this is one of the first times I allowed myself to truly just use opaque paint freely, wet and wet. Uh, especially as can be seen here in the, this tire. Uh, but also here in the exhaust fumes. And like, look at this, the the, the back window, this red, purple kind of ultramarine, this highlight, it's just, just there. I let it carry me. Uh, now, let's see if we have anything interesting in the next couple of pages. This is interesting. This is OK. This is probably my least favorite of the whole thing. Um, this I like a lot. I kind of feel like the moment I put this dark in, I was like, oh, that's, oops, sorry, you can't see anything. This one. <laughs> the moment I put that um, kind of dark, wet and wet, I was like, oh, that looks really, really good. I really like that. And there's this soft transition, then sharp, uh, soft, sharp, soft. Sharp, I uh, really like that. Didn't plan this one too much, and it turned out just how I would want it to. Um, this is another one, fun monochromatic carbazole violet experiment. Um, and again, to see these and read all the descriptions, 
feel free to get the book. I will put a link in the description box. Here's another fun kind of spread. Don't worry, I have the full one in the next page, but this is a ghost car. Uh, this is actually quite interesting. Let's see if I have it here. I think I might have it here. I actually don't remember for sure. Um, no, I don't. I don't have this one here. Oh, yeah, I do. I have this one. There we go. Would you look at that? Uh, so, yeah, this one, my entire goal was to have the pen pencil lines. I talk about it here. To have the pencil lines play a reverse role instead of being the structure for the car. And here you'll be able to see the smaller version. Instead of being the structure of the car, I wanted it to almost feel like the final finished details here uh, are done by pencil. And because the washes are so soft, what you're only left with is the pencil details. Uh, and that's a really, really fun effect. Uh, so that was kind of my rationale for working with this and working on this painting. Honestly, when I finished it, I was like, that's a bit gimmicky. But now that I look at it, I have gained a new appreciation. I love how some of the pencil lines also show, like just barely showing. Uh, then we have this fun uh, motorcycle, lots of negative painting around here, very fun process. This is what I was talking about with the gutter, right? And the, and the full bleed, meaning this reaches all the way to the edge. Now there is a, bat, a bit of a gap here, but it's still, a picture of the car. I wanted to leave a bit of a gap, but here it reaches all the way up here, kind of formatting stuff you need to uh, be aware of. Um, let's see what's more interesting here. This, these two are interesting, but this one in particular, let me zoom in on that. This copy is gonna be trashed at some point. Um, I remember exactly where the original picture is from, like the scene, the day. Um, this is really good to me. Uh, it's a very effective, yet um, like e efficient and effective painting process because it's both efficient in that the shapes were all put in very, very, it just, it was easy. I just followed my kind of instinct of where the colors are and kind of painted these washes in a very fun way. But it was also um, quite effective, meaning it looks quite realistic. Uh, again, it's all in the zoom in, zoom out. We zoom out a bit. This is almost almost like a photo, you know, an old photo maybe, but a photo. Um, and it's another kind of, I don't know if it's one of my favorites necessarily. It is a favorite here. I really, really like this one. And trust me, like holding this thing, let me show you, just as a full book, it's just a fun thing to have. Um, I'm having so much fun with this because this challenge was so huge for me. Just having this, these all consolidated in one spot is just a pleasure, really. Oh, we're coming up with something really good. I mean, I'm going to tease it for you. But maybe, maybe you recognize this one. This, to me, was huge. There we go. So here you can see the full thing. Uh, I think this one, let's see if I have it here. I might have it here, yes. Uh, what really did it for me here is this, you know, the windshield cover. Um, this one is special. Um, I actually want to show it to you on the main camera here. Let me zoom out. I want to show you, maybe even I'll show you a scan just to really show you the details here. Um, so remember how I told you sometimes you start with one detail that, that fascinates you? That's exactly how I painted this one. Now this is number 66. So I will get it for you. I want to show you the the kind of full quality scan, 66, there we go. Um, I started with this again, with the this detail here. And from there I spread out and painted the rest. And the result of doing such a thing, just following your inspiration, I think is wonderful. Um, I think it tells the story. And I will say one more thing on the background, This is, by the way, talking about, um, you know, uh, Gina's comment. And this, to me, is one of the best backgrounds I, I have here. It's just very rich, and the color harmony works so well, yet it's so abstract when you look at it. Like, what is that? I'm not even sure. I think it was a um, 
kind of a stone um, wall fence thing. Uh, so that's what you see the yellow. I'll show you here. Um, let me go full screen for a second. So this is kind of a yellow fence. It has a bit of a highlight on top, and then there's a hedge kind of thing, plants. And then behind it, there was, you know, whatever. I don't even know. It's like a farm thing or something like that. And it just looks so good. Um, there is a bit for those who mentioned granulation. Someone asked me over on Instagram. Uh, they said they noticed I don't have a lot of uh, granulations in my paintings. And what I said was, and many of you can probably expect this, uh, it wasn't by choice necessarily. I just don't have a lot of granulating colors. Uh, so I have nothing against granulation. Um, I just don't have many colors that gran granulate. And when I do use them, I just use them because because they're maybe, I don't know why, because they were handy, they were in front of me, they were the specific uh, color I needed. And here, I think think what you're seeing is granulations, especially top left corner um, in the background there. I think a bit on the uh, windshield uh, screen also, you see a bit of that granulation. There are also interesting um, flow patterns like these. Um, let me show you if you can see my hand here. Not like up there, the way the tree blends into the sky is very kind of veiny. Uh, almost like you would if you would drop pure paint into a very wet wet area, it will spread out with veins, like really cool looking. Depending on the pigment, some pigments will spread differently. Um, so I don't know what it was about the colors I used here in particular, but they work. They work, and this is another favorite of mine. If we're just talking about the screen here, uh, I mean that is something special to me. Now let's look at a couple of others. Um, the next one is really cool. The next one I love. Uh, I remember this was in my hometown where I grew up. Um, I came to visit the family and took this picture. Now, when I painted it, I thought it was terrible. I didn't like it at all. Um, but then after I kind of let it sit for a while, uh, I did start seeing the magic. It ended up working. Uh, it's kind of experiment again in crazy colors. Look at this beautiful kind of transition. Uh, it's all pretty much merged. Here you can see a bit of granulation too, by the way. This was my granulation, uh, I guess, time, granulation period here as well. Here as well. Yeah, I was using the same blue here, I think. I wonder what it is. You know, I have a feeling I know what it is. I think it is some kind of a cerulean blue. Uh, I think it's some kind of a Daniel Smith cerulean. I can find it actually. Um, I don't have it on the desk here, but I can find it later. I really think that was what it what this is. Or it could be uh, manganese also. I had a time where I used a bit of manganese. Maybe that's that. Uh, who knows? Who knows? We're getting close to the end of the book. Uh, oh, this one. I love this one. Probably the oldest car I have here in terms of like oldest model. Um, this one, I actually have it here. Well, let me show you. Very fun. Very fun. Uh, now, can you tell what makes this one unique? Um, it's a bit hard to tell. I'll give you a hint if you look at the paper. Um, you may be able to tell. Um, yeah, this was uh, painted over hot press uh, paper. I do have a few that I painted over hot press, uh, and this is one of them. And you can really tell if where, where light hits the let me see if I can show you where the light hits the black or the dark color. You can really see how it reflects it um, very, oops, sorry, very cleanly. Um, and this is really, uh, I think, led to a bit of a different process. And I always talk about how with hot press paper, you almost have to use more water in the beginning uh, just to maintain <clears throat> the same amount of flow because the paint tends to dry on evenly more easily. But yeah, I don't even know what model this would be. You let me know if you know or if it's interesting. Um, you'll notice also a lot of um, touches of white gel pen, like places like this. That's a white gel pen. Um, I can show you there. <laughs> you'll see it better. Let me zoom in a bit to talk about the details. Um, like this spot uh, right here, that's a 
And the way you can tell is because there's a hole in the stroke. That's sometimes what the, the gel pen will do. See here and here and here too, by the way. Just a few fun spontaneous highlights I added, but you can tell they're hollow strokes. Um, and that's how you recognize the white gel pen very easily. Also when I signed it, uh, I usually try to have some flow in it, but even when there is flow, can you see this? There's uh, holes within the strokes. Um, so yeah, that is uh, another one that I really, really like. Um, it makes it unique that I use a different paper than my usual one. And uh, I quite like the result. I have a lot of sheets of hot press paper and I should probably use them more. I'll, I'll, I feel inspired. I think the next time I paint, it'll be with hot press paper. Uh, just the smoothness. Uh, you can achieve some things that are harder on, on cold press and rough papers. Um, so, you know, I try it all out. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Diane, it's their loss that these brands don't see your amazing talent and send you freebies to proud. Yeah. I mean, honestly, for freebie, I won't do like a full review. I'll just kind of use them and, and talk about them for sure. Um, I'm not, I don't know if you noticed, I'm not the type to do very comprehensive reviews and unboxing and showing the box and many different angles and showing what's inside the box. I just enjoy using the product. Uh, if the product, if the product is useful for me, it'll probably get a good review. If it's not that useful, I'll just talk a bit about it, you know, um, but I won't necessarily, um, I just prefer, you know, if I don't have anything too nice to say, uh, I just won't say anything. Um, I don't think though, you know, I think the number of like bad products I really encountered so far were few. Um, there are two that stand out and it's just a specific product. It's not the entire brand maybe. Uh, Hanemule, I know is a very f uh, popular uh, paper. The ones I tried, I hated. I know there's probably ones I haven't that are good. Uh, and Artscape, I think it's called. It's just uh, watercolors that were not so good. But other than that, the major brands are all good, honestly. It's just a matter of preference and what you can get for the cheapest in your area. Because every brand will work differently in different places. If you're in Western Europe, you'll get Schmenka maybe. If you're in the UK, you'll get SAA. Um, if you're here, it's easy to get White Knights, Rosa Gallery. Um, St. Petersburg is very easy to and it's good quality. You know, it just really depends on where you are. Um, and, and all of these are kind of on par in terms of their level. Just look at the light fastness to make sure it doesn't fade. Uh, it looks like Sunday ice cream. Yes, there is something to that. Um, really like that old timer. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, and of course, the castle in the back. Yeah, the castle is just a bonus. You know, that's in this point, uh, at this point, it kind of clicked for me finally. Um, um, how to paint a full scene, not just the car. This is a great example of that. And one way to show it is if we uh, zoom in on it for a second, you'll see here, there's a bit of a gap and that is very intentional just to separate the two, but it still keeps an interesting composition going. It d does make a nice kind of separation. Um, and the colors are also uh, very harmonious because I keep them very simple. So I use the same uh, blue here that I used in this green mix, this uh, neutral yellow. The yellow I used here is the same yellow to mix this green. It all works and syncs together. And that's usually how I uh, get the best result color-wise. More is less for me. Uh, of course, this vibrant green is very important for this painting. Um, by the way, I painted this on what was initially a scrap piece of paper, talking about that from earlier. Um, this was, I don't know, I don't even know what it was, just an experiment in colors. Um, and then I ended up using the other side for this. And these tend to be the best paintings sometimes, the ones you paint on a piece of paper you didn't care about, like the one I showed you with the corner cut. You kind of go for it, you end up with the best results, you know. Um, oh, by the way, there is a change to the final book that you will see. There is an extra painting I shared um, I think here in the final one next to uh, car number one, you will have a painting. You can't see it here. Teaser. You have to get the book to see it. It's a good painting. I think you'll like it. Um, yeah. 
not too much to say about these. These are really nice. These are old, old photos I took probably back in 2017. Um, it was a really nice scene. Um, this is pretty much the same car I drive, not the specific one, but the same one. Um, yeah. And by the way, I didn't know back then. Now I know that um, heavy duty, more heavy duty vehicles have different front and back tires. So the, the middle section pops out in the front, but in the back, it's more um, beveled inwards. I had no idea. I didn't know that. Um, now, what I think is, to me, the highlight of this uh, painting in particular is, the, let me find the original, I think, is framed, so I can't demonstrate on the original. But this here, this curve, that, that's there is a smooth transition and a sharp edge. You know I love that kind of an effect. Uh, that's something that I'm really, really um, fond of capturing. Now, if you've stuck around all this time, this one you may remember from the live stream, right? That's a cool effect, uh, droplets. But if you stuck around all this time, we're getting to some very interesting spots here. Now, again, if you want to really look at all of these in depth, you'll have to get the book. But here we go. This is a very interesting one. We're getting, let me pause on that for a second. We're getting to uh, the stage, the latter, um, I would say, third of the challenge itself. And that's when the crazy growth spurt began. Um, so these are, uh, the. Th this is the Thunderbird that Gail sent me. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, that, that was huge. I made a tutorial. It was a very fun tutorial to film. Talking about the chromatic surface, you also purchased these from me, so I'm super grateful for that. Thank you so, so much. You also encouraged me to now get that last mile of the process and finish the, the book itself, so thank you. Much, much appreciated. Um, this is where things really started to connect. I don't know exactly like how to explain what happened. Um, maybe the, the, the mood I was in for those months. But it really will show you. You will see in a couple of seconds. That will be kind of the last stretch, um, the last quarter or third of the live stream, too. Uh, there was something special going on there. And there is a progression. The start was bumpy. Uh, that is OK. You know, So many people are scared to paint their sketchbook with something bad. Um, now, nothing is promised. You don't know for sure if you'll make it to where you want to be. Um, unless you know. Uh, and some of these things, you know, I just felt like they would end up working out. Uh, and they did. Some things I think end up working out don't. Uh, but uh, guarantees aren't really a thing. Um, all you really have is your passion and the thing that compels you to paint, to paint it next. So the thing you want to paint next is pretty much all you have. Um, and that's the path of least resistance. I think that's the easiest way to paint. Uh, Juan, cobalt blue, e burnt sienna, your favorite color. No, it burnt. So I would say cobalt blue is becoming a very useful one for me. Um, I'll try and recreate it using something else. But generally, the very neutral blue, not French ultramarine, that is very, um, very artificial looking. Cobalt looks much more natural. Thalo blue looks almost too tropical for me. Sometimes it just doesn't fit, doesn't mesh well with what I'm trying to achieve. Um, if I dilute it a bit with white, it could look that. <coughs> um, but yeah, cobalt is becoming uh, one of my favorites. Burnt sienna, not so much. I just don't use it a lot. Um, I have a, a different one for you. Uh, yellow ochre. Some yellow ochres, like Mission Gold's yellow ochre, M. Graham's yellow ochre. I love, I love these. Daniel Smith's um, didn't work out as well for me. It's still pretty good, but like M. Graham's for sure, it's so good. It's so, um, it's very creamy texture. It's very easy to rewet. Usually, you know, um, yellow ochres sometimes are hard and they dry very hard and they're also quite, sometimes they're too opaque for my taste, these are very nice. Like Mission Gold, 
and uh, mgram are so good and it's just the right color to get a neutral yellow fast so i don't have to start adding blue and red to my yellow or neutral tint i can just go ahead and use yellow ochre um, and i've been relying heavily on yellow ochre in the huge um, painting i'm working on i don't know I don't know if everyone knows what it is. Let me just share a picture of the process with you if I have it here. Um, painting projects, Ponte Vecchio picks. Yeah, I don't think I even have one here. Let me just transfer. I want to show you because I keep mentioning this painting and uh, maybe not everyone, um, maybe not everyone is familiar with it, funny enough. Uh, I'll, sh I'll share like the newest version I have here. Um, where is it now? Why? Oh, because I painted it, because I shared it in the story. Oh, no, I have it. I have it. So it's a huge painting I'm working on, 240 by um, 70. You've seen it in uh, a recent video, if you've watched that video. Um, but I do want to just share it real quick here uh, to show you. It'll be up on the screen in a second. But that painting, for these kinds of paintings, you really need some convenience mixtures if you're going to mix very large areas. It's going to be very hard to manually mix each and everything. Uh, and for that purpose, you have convenience mixtures. So let me show you. One second. Where is my window? Here it is. Here's my stream yards. Um, add overlay. Downloads. OK, this one. I didn't crop it. I think it'll fill up the screen. Uh, this is huge. This is 240 by 70. Um, so I can stand next to it you'll, and you'll you'll see. It's, it has tons of details. I'm 70% done, I would say. There's a lot more work to be done. Um, but yeah, for this one, for all of the warm buildings you see, I used a lot of yellow ochre. Um, so that would be uh, that could be seen as a new favorite of my one. Uh, what are your favorites, though? I'm curious. Or maybe you mean these are yours, and I just kind of rambled on about them. Uh, but yeah, the I would say cobalt, um, burnt sienna, um, yellow ochre. Um, which one I was really enjoying recently? You could say just white, um, permanent white, uh, designer's gouache. I love that. I use that a lot. <laughs> Um, Marjorie, I'm interested in knowing which were your first few and your last few paintings in this book, and what would you say the most important thing you learned about technique on this journey? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, this is chronological. So what you're seeing is by order. So the cards are numbered based on the order I painted them chronologically. So I did show, let me show you again, just real quick. Uh, I did show how there's a huge difference between, say, the first car or the first couple of cars, right? So this would be the first one, second and third. There's a pretty big difference. And then I had a, this very nice success here. There's a pretty big difference between the results I'm getting here early and the consistency with which I'm getting them as opposed to kind of the latter stages here. So here I'm starting to be a lot more consistent with the quality. But from here on out, and it's all chronological again, uh, from, and it was painted over the span of uh, two years. So what you're seeing is about two years of work. Uh, again, these are the, let me zoom in on the Thunderbirds. We haven't looked at those closely yet. Um, uh, car 84. Uh, a lot of fun effects going on here. But I would say my favorite is in 85. That And I write it down in the book. It reflects the ground. So you see you have the ground brick pattern. And you can see it reflected on the back of the car. Uh, which I love. I think that is just a wonderful touch. If I may say so myself, uh, if I may attest to my own painting's quality. Um, so yeah, and from here on out, the quality is, I don't know, it jumps, leaps, and bounds. Like this, the colors here are perfect. This this red looks like a gemstone, uh, the way it contrasts against the uh, the green. And this was painted on hot press paper, by the way. I don't think I have it here because it's framed somewhere. Uh, yeah. Uh, but this was huge to me. And, and the tires, I took a different approach, kind of painted them after it dried. Uh, this whole thing, because it's on hot press, took a bit of a different approach. Um, but man, I love this one. Let me show you up close. Some of the details here. Um, to me, I don't know. That's just how I wanted it to look. 
and this highlight here on the you know this highlight here plays a big big role um more consistency here this one is pretty good too this one i have the original right here <laughs> so you can see it we have on the other side nothing um took this picture at the airport from an airplane window uh, opaque paint here just to bring back some milky white stripes on the runway or whatever that was you know it was great fun to paint also the way uh, the colors blended on this man i just really really like that didn't even end up going with the sharp contrast i planned uh, initially um so this is all chronological right started from here moving on to these um there's a zoom in this is another interesting one i have it here the original a fiat i think if i recognize it um and this is one of the only um vertical formats here i don't have many of these and you will see maybe one or two more i don't remember this is one of the only the motorcycles are vertical format too you know um now this is a fun one so this i also have the original right here look how <laughs> the editing and scanning made it uh in the in the also printing made it a little more uh red there's a slight difference more orange in the original one but i'm going to keep this um double page open because it's really fun to see the sketch stage here uh, i wanted to really show like what i'm after when i scan um let's see what you're saying in the chat and we'll kind of continue discussing this one um but yeah i wanted to show some of my process too and you will see in the next couple of uh paintings um gold <laughs> i don't know what i missed um <coughs> oh wonderful i've caught you still live i'm uh, glad i haven't missed celebrating your book launch with you Laurent. thank you thank you so much nikki much much appreciated oh designers gouache um it's a color i use a lot let me show you I'll show you in the camera uh do i have it here yes i do of course i always have it here uh it's this thing i mix it freely with my watercolors it mixes really well because it's gouache and it makes them look more uh opaque and more interesting and um it's just a really useful one to sorry to lighten things up um one more thing just if we're, while we're here, this effect, you'll see it here. Um, this is one of my favorite bits of this entire painting. The wet and wet details here are really good. Uh, Arthur, I often use earth tones, but I'm not sure about the Daniel Smith one. Lately, I tried some more quinacridones with ultramarine to create transparent darks. Muddy darks can be a problem sometimes. Yeah, so I noticed when you end up mixing a lot of um, a lot of colors together, you get like four or five pigments in, it starts to be a problem. Uh, anything under that, you're okay. Um, it will depend on the brand, like was mentioned earlier in the chat, like every, I think Marjorie told, said it, sorry if it wasn't Marjorie. Um, <coughs> every... Every color will act a little differently. Every brand has different compositions to it. Um, at the end of the day, mud isn't really a thing. It's just a brown or gray color. If you add enough of a different color to it, it will stop being mud. That's something I should probably make a video on. Um, if you just take a pile of mud that you have and start adding phthalo blue to it, at some point you'll have more phthalo blue than mud. It will look like a color. Most of the colors I'm using in my paintings are muted. It's very rare to see a lot of very vibrant colors in a scene. Um, this, this, this scene I'm working on now, the huge one I just showed you, really proves it to me, this one. It's, everything is <laughs> muted. Even the oranges you see are like a um, kind of a violety brown orange. Um, that's just how it is, you know? Mud usually happens when you just mix and mix and mix too much and you apply a gray paint to the paper. And you don't understand why you lost the saturation because you used too many other colors, if that makes sense, instead of just the pure colors. By the way, I want to um, thank everyone who's here. We have like 50 people and it's two and a half hours into the stream. Thank you so, so much. Uh, if you can drop a like on this live stream, I would appreciate it a lot. Uh, and thank you so much to everyone who uh, purchased the book um people wanted to see the cover earlier here it is once again 
uh, front and back. Um, and I'm really, at some point, I decided I want to start discussing the question of what makes a painting a masterpiece. And I don't really, I don't give necessarily complete answers in this book. It's not a how-to book. Um, but I think it's an exploration of the idea. And if you read between the lines, and if you look at the results, um, I think they kind of speak for themselves. Um, and you can see the progression, which I think is probably more of the thing that may inspire others than just telling them, do this and do that, you know? Um, so, yeah. And thank you so much, Arthur, for the question. It makes sense to me that... Um, that sometimes over mixing with earth tones in particular can get a lot of browns but the browns aren't the problem the the grays aren't the problem it's more about what you do with them and what context you're placing them in and if it's just a big mess of brown gray violet green muted then yes it will not end up maybe looking coherent and cohesive um i hope that makes sense uh gina i love cobalt violet and cobalt violet I don't think I ever, 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 I don't think I ever used it. Uh, in cerulean blue, it's fun to just create backgrounds with them. I painted watercolors on cream colored satin fabric. So cool looking. Yeah, that's cool. I, I've seen, this reminds me, I've seen, I think it was, um, who was it? Tian Chung Wei did a video where he painted on tinted paper, just a dark green tinted paper and he used a lot of opaque paints and it, it looked really cool. It was uh, just cotton paper, but it was colored already. I've never seen such a thing, um, which gives me an idea. Maybe I should try just tinting it myself and seeing how I can paint over it. That could be interesting. Um, I know uh, opaque paints don't do necessarily well on very dark. Like, I think it's different if the paper arrives already tinted as opposed to you painting the first layer on it, tinting it. But yeah. I've never seen anyone paint in tinted watercolor paper, so that was fun. Um, yeah, it's a very useful uh, white color, Judith. Um, Arthur, maybe I mean chalky where there's too much pigment in one place. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah, so that would be, that's the more easy problem to solve. I had that um, when I used Artscape, the colors I talked about earlier. So they had like three pigments in every tube. And what ended up happening was I'll mix two colors together. Boom, you get six or five pigments. It's a mess no matter what. You can't mix more than, you can't mix two colors together. You have to paint one color at a time. Um, now with single pigment colors, you can mix three tubes easily. You'll get just three pigments, which, which is uh, okay. Now, now everything is possible. You can mix 20 pigments for all I care. It's just very hard to get a good result. Um, so yeah. You can mix four or five. It doesn't really matter the specific number. What matters is, are you getting the result you want? Um, and yeah, more pigments tend to uh, cloud that result, so to speak. Now, I just want to check something, and we'll continue uh, looking at the chat. Um, I have a couple of more paintings you really want to see. I think near the end, again, is where it starts to really, really shine as a challenge. Um, And it does show the progression, which is so cool to see. Now, for me, it's much, much easier to see the progression uh, after I have this whole consolidated in one go. Um, so, uh, Isabe, hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly. Congratulations. Is the link for book in the description? Yes. And thank you so much. Uh, link, all of them are in the description box. It's the first link, so it's very easy to spot um, for every Amazon website I have the link to that they provided. Uh, and you should be able to find it there, uh, wherever you are on Earth, <laughs> hopefully. Um, Pondfish, my masterpieces go on my refrigerator until I make new ones to replace it. Cool. That's a great prime location. I love having a couple of paintings of mine laying around, not even framed, just kind of <laughs> laying around the room so I can look at them. Oh, Jacqueline, hey. Oh, wow, you're still alive. I've been with my crafting group, so couldn't join you earlier. Yeah, no worries, and thank you so much for being here. I noticed that you were absent, but I did start the stream a little later than usual, so it made sense to me that a lot of people who I usually see won't be able to join, um, at least not in the early stages. 
uh, of the stream. Now let's continue here. So I've shown you, and let me, I'll zoom in a bit more on this because I don't know how much um, of the details you are seeing just due to the you know live stream quality and so on. But here we go. So the sketch stage <clears throat> and then how it ended up looking as the finished painting. And of course, we have the original one, can't beat that. Um, these, you know, gentle touches. So, so here's a perfect example of how useful something like yellow ochre is. So if you have this kind of a gray or even a bluish kind of gray and you put in like a lemon yellow, something like that, you'll get an instant green. But because yellow ochre is inherently muted, you can get away with just adding something like that in and it will still look just warmer than what you have. So that's a very useful thing to have, actually. And Jacqueline, oh, sorry, I wasn't here. Love your art and always pray for you. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Yeah, no worries at all. No worries at all. We're going here. We're going two and a half hours strong. <laughs> uh, here's another one I really, really like. I like the reference so much I actually included it. Plus, it's one of the more realistic ones. So now you can see these three and the original one. Lots of the same truck, basically. Now, the front, to me, that's like the best spot. That's my favorite. Um, I have been using some opaque paint in this one. You see all of these kind of abstract details are done with a lot of mixing of that designer's gouache I talked about. Um, this here as well, you can tell probably if you're um, well-versed in what the watercolor look is usually. Uh, but this is a wonderful just reference photo. I got lucky with it, captured the light exactly as I wanted. So I was very inspired to paint it. It was the easiest thing in the world. This was also done on hot press paper. This is smooth. It's again, crazy to see how small these paintings are compared to let's say the amount of uh, details or just their finish, I think. So this is uh, six by nine inches, pretty tiny. Um, most of these are small. Uh, so that's that. Let's see what else we have in store here. So these, okay, this is cool. Uh, these two actually were a huge win. Um, just because, so there's reasons for both, uh, but generally speaking, like this one, it's very hard to capture these greens uh, and have them look um, very natural and, and match the original photo, especially when you have these strong reds involved too. Um, but I managed to, sometimes they're just, it's misleading. They're actually more on the yellow side. It just looks green, but it's actually more yellow. Now the other one, that to me was a big challenge because you don't really have strong contrasts to rely on in this, this kind of a scene. Uh, it was completely in the dark. The, the entire car was in the dark. Um, and I kind of, I don't want to say got lucky because I think a part of why I succeeded was it captured me all of these shapes here, the abstract shapes, the blue versus the gray. Uh, it really captivated me and my imagination, the logo, uh, even these cars, like this is one of my favorite bits here. Um, so I found something that inspired me, even though there was no strong contrast. And I think that's why uh, it turned out really uh, the way I wanted it to, you know, and next page is really interesting as well. So this is another one, kind of an underdog. Uh, it's a bit of a more boring side view angle. Um, here's the original. I'll always have the original if I have it here. Um, I don't know, to me, this is a bit of a gem. Um, just because of how I painted a background. Um, and let me show you the colors are a little more um, a little more vibrant here. Um, I can show you the original. So this is 94. Um, just give me one second. So I'll bring up car 94 on the screen. I want to show you the background here because it's super vibrant, like in a cool, cool way. Uh, books, 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 cars, picks. Naming my folders. Um, 94. Okay, check this out. The background here, super duper abstracted. Um, and it still reads very realistically, very representational. It, um, the way it kind of wraps, there we go, around the car. I like it a lot. 
Um, you can see a lot of watercolory effects. But I don't know, I still really, really like it. Look at the tires. To me, this is one of, again, the biggest successes here. There's like, uh, I don't know, 20 something paintings that are, I love them. Then there's like 10 that I really, really like, five that are perfect. Um, yeah, yeah. The one, the one I talked about earlier, that's probably has to be in the top three uh, with the perfect flow. Uh, let's see what you're saying. Paula, the technique you were referring to is called toning your paper. Interesting. Page 28 to 29 of the complete guide to watercolor explains the process. Think they use acrylic paint to tone, then watercolor and gouache. Interesting. So I would be curious because the way uh, Qian Chung Wei described it, it sounded like he purchased the paper like this. But maybe I misunderstood. It could very well be that. Um, but the way it sounded, the way he worded it was almost like um, that's how it came. Um, it's very interesting. I think, I don't know if I have that book, but uh, let me see. Uh, Tony. It's interesting. I never, um, never thought of doing it this way. I'm going to open up. I found a video on the technique. I want to watch it later on. Thank you, Paula. Thank you. That will help me, actually, because I'm wondering if I can do it myself. I'm not sure. Um, I have acrylics, so I, don't, I mean, maybe I could do it. I'll give it a try. Isabel, I love watching you paint the light, uh, light in opaque. Thank you. Yeah, that's a fun part of the process. Hopefully next week uh, will be a painting live stream. I have some good references to, to paint. Ryan, love the book. I have to go uh, to my Hungarian lesson now. Well, anyway, I'll message you at some point. Yeah, sure, Ryan, no worries. Um, enjoy your Hungarian lesson. That's cool. That's really cool. That's super random. I love it. Uh, yeah, so let's go through some of the kind of last ones. There's not a lot, uh, but these are big, in my opinion. Um, so here, I thought I'd give you a taste of the process. Um, this kind of motorcycle. Now, it's interesting, you know, they talk about um, uh, light to dark, dark to light. Uh, the way I painted this, as you can probably kind of tell um, by the pictures, I started, this is a sketch, I started by filling in the darks, just the black areas. Then I completed the in-betweens. Uh, and it was a very interesting way to paint this, I have to say. Um, I like to sometimes just place the darks first and only then complete and fill in the blanks, the gap between the values, light, dark, boom, middle. Um, there is no real reason to it. Um, I just find it fun sometimes to do. Uh, all of these details had to be abstracted. And if you look at the original one, um, and I can zoom out a bit to show you, um, I think it read, reads really, really well. Uh, but all of this is just fake. I don't know how else to explain it. It's just fake detail, of course. That's how it is. A painting is an illusion, as Alvaro Castaneda said. There's this little pipe going on through here, and it's, it's all a mess, but it works. It creates the impression. Now, here's one of my favorite spreads here. Um, this painting really grew on me over the last couple of years. It's... Currently, can't make it up. It's my um, background to my uh, computer, um, my background, the background photo. Um, so the thing I struggled with is just um, mixing the the very vibrant colors. And you can see here, um, very kind of, uh, I have it here, the original one. It's so funny how small it is uh, compared to this enlarged version. Um, I really struggled with uh, achieving these very bright yellows, and I kind of used acrylics here. I tried at least to mimic those, and I uh, kind of failed. <laughs> uh, so I was disappointed, but then I kind of let it sit for a while. And let me show you the uh, full version here, though. This is so much smaller than I remember now that I look at it physically. It's so funny. Um, especially the way the two cars are placed and their colors, like blue versus kind of yellow-orange. So that's an interesting thing. And the background, it's so almost abstract. This one really grew on me. Uh, I really started liking this painting. Um, the more I look at it, you know, the more I got, I've gotten so used to seeing it in a large size on my screen that now it looks, this looks tiny. This is crazy how tiny it is, uh, but it's perfect to me. I'm looking at it upside down because I'm looking at the whole thing upside down. 
Um, but yeah, that, that was me trying different things. Maybe the acrylics would work. They didn't. Was a bit disappointed. But then after I came back to it with fresh mind, it gave me a completely different impression. Uh, here's another one. So this is interesting. Now we're really close to the end of the book, but I'll show you. This is the spread I want to show you because this is actually based on a photo I took a long time ago that I painted as the full scene, as this full intersection. Uh, this is just a sketch, but that's okay. This is the older painting. And then I just zoomed in on this car and painted it enlarged. So I enlarged this here. Then this is how I painted it, the new version. Now, of course, in the old version, it was just a part of the entire scene, right? So um, I could not devote as much attention to it. But still, like, you can tell the difference in, in I think, control and kind of understanding and, and all of these uh, things, sorry, when it comes to making the most out of watercolor. So that's a really fun page for me to look at uh, that... If anything, tells the story of growth, by the way. I don't know if you heard there was just crazy thunders here. Uh, if This is like the best example of growth. This is a full-on comparison. Uh, a gap of, I think the top one was painted in 2017. Don't quote me on that. I think it was 2017. Maybe start of 2018. Um, and then the other one, 2023, I think. Um, Catherine, dropping by to say hello. Much appreciation for your positive energy. Thank you so much, Catherine. Uh, Marjorie, I no longer buy coffee table books, but now if you ever do a book of commercial kitchens and bars, I would have to buy one for my daughter, maybe for each of my daughters. Now that's cool. That's a great good business idea. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, let's continue here. Final stretch. So we have this one, 98. I kind of remember them by numbers by now. Um, but yeah, this this was initially what I thought might end up being the book's cover. And then here is the full thing, just a little zoomed out. Um, this is one of my favorite bits here, the swoosh on the taillights, very strong red. I had to use Pyro Scarlet straight out of the tube multiple times to get this. Uh, it was very hard to mix. Uh, to be this vibrant. I mean, I didn't have to mix it. It was just hard to lift enough of it off the tube. Now, I also use, so I talked about Shinhan PWC. There is this wonderful color they have called pale green that is also slightly opaque, and it's a perfect color for these red traffic lights. Just looks wonderful. I've been using a lot of that too. Now we come to card 99. 99 was one of my favorites. This is a huge painting. You've seen it by now. Most of you know it. This is a huge, huge piece, and you can see all of the details and the reflections. Um, this is just fun. I don't even know if I have the, oh, I don't have the original, I actually put it in an auction. So this one is, uh, I think it's one of the paintings that didn't sell. So maybe it'll sell in the next one. Uh, but yeah, look at the details here, colors. I remember snapping this photo vividly. Uh, wipers here, one of the things that got it the most love. This car here. Uh, and lastly, a car 100, which is nothing special. So that's the funniest of them all, if you ask me. There's just really nothing special about this one that I can say. I painted it. Uh, I shared the process on a live stream. Um, I signed with the pale green, same pale green that you saw earlier. Um, but really nothing special about it. And this goes to show, you know, I went through all this growth, but still not every piece I make is a banger. And that's okay. Uh, sometimes it's the overall idea, sometimes it's the inspiration and whether it's there or not. Sometimes maybe it's unfinished. I can probably do a couple of washes and continue it. Um, and yes, and here I have a bit of a section uh, that's written that's nice. If you get the book, you'll see it. And this is the end. And this is the book. This is the thing. Sorry, there's still the not for resale here. This is my proof copy that I received uh, from Amazon. Uh, to go over it, make sure there are no mistakes here. This is the um, yep. This is the right orientation. Some of the things I kind of set out to explore with this one. Uh, what makes a painting a masterpiece? And um, hopefully this book is some kind of a masterpiece in its own right. I guess um, I think it's a very fun one to have. Very different from everything I've done so far. Uh, this painting, by the way, if you want to see the original one, let me. 
Uh, see if I can find it for you. I think it should be quite accessible. It's fun that I can still talk to you while I'm doing stuff around the room because I have this lav mic on me. Much more convenient. Um, let's see if I can find it real quick. If I can't, no biggie. But I think I put it somewhere around here. Oops, I think we had a minor power out storm and all of that. Um, uh, let's see if I can find it in this pile of paintings. I think it should be here somewhere. Sorry, sorry. I know you can't see anything. I'm just doing this off camera. Um, but let me check real quick. If I don't have it accessible, it's okay. Oh, no, I know where it is. It's on the other side of the room. I think it's here in this pile. I have a bunch of piles of paintings. Um, like everything is here. I just no, don't know exactly where. Um, well, I cannot find it at the moment. So we'll have to skip that one. Uh, it could be fun to show you the real thing, but that's fine. It's in one of these uh, folders here. Just don't know which one. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, a painting that came to be after I kind of finished the, the challenge and um, just came out of nowhere, honestly, blew my mind and I had to, I had to include it um, just because of how everything worked out perfectly in my opinion uh, in it. It's a very unique piece. And I decided on it being the title, the, the cover book. Um, so yeah, let me, I'm gonna take it back to the table. Let me full screen myself now uh, and show you the whole thing now with me. Um, this is the size of the book. I didn't even talk about like features. This is um, eight inches by 6.25. Now, the reason I went for this weird orientation is Amazon as a print on demand kind of indie publish has some limitations. One of the limitations is this is the only format they do that is horizontal. Um, all of the other sizes, there is a square size, eight by eight, I think. And then everything else is like this. And most of these are horizontal. So I really wanted a horizontal format. I tried a vertical one, did not work. I tried like doing it vertical and then larger and having two paintings, it just did not look good. <clears throat> so I ended up going for this. And you know what? I think I made the right choice because um, at this size, you can see all the details. It's great. It's fun. I'll probably look at this. Like, I don't read my own books most of the time. This one I will look at because it's so fun. And I don't have to take out a pile of the paintings, which I'm fortunate enough to, to have because I'm the one who painted them. Um, but this, to me, is one of the more fun products I made because it's more of uh, entertainment, less, um, less to teach you something and more to share something cool with you, uh, which is this challenge. Um, yeah, it could be a little more of a, a self-indulgent uh, project because again, I am not, it's not like frustration-free watercolor, paint uh, free loose watercolors and find your own freedom and all of that good stuff. But it is a pretty cool um, thing to look at. Uh, and plus, in addition to the, um, to the car paintings, you get the, kind of bonus, um, where is it? This one here that I kind of skipped because I didn't want to read the foreword because you'll you'll read it in the book. Um, so yeah, you have this one, pretty high quality. Showing showing the, the full painting. And then you'll have near the end, of course, this one too. So you can look at that. And there will be another one. Um, that I added kind of last minute that um, I posted it online, but this is a nice zoom in. You'll see a lot of fun details there. Uh, so yeah, I think this is pretty much it in terms of the book. Uh, if you have any questions, we'll kind of move towards maybe wrapping it up. Three hours, I think it's a good, it's a good, I don't know why I got filled with energy today. So I'm happy about it because this day was like the worst, most tiring in a while. Uh, Genevieve, 
love your uh, book. What is the biggest watercolor you've ever painted? I want to attempt a large watercolor, almost the size of a door. Any tips? Thank you. Yeah, and that's pretty much the size I'm working on right now. I've shown it right now, a couple of minutes ago, uh, and I've been posting a lot of stories with it. It's this thing. It's huge. Um, it's actually, if you look behind me, that's the same closet. So it's just <laughs> leaning there on it, leaned on it. Earlier, this is 240, I mean, 240, 2 meters and 40 centimeters. Uh, the, this dimension over 70. Um, so it's a very extreme wide format, uh, but 240 centimeters obviously is a lot. If I'm not mistaken, the largest watercolor, like world record, is around 5 by 4, 5 by 3.8, something like this. Uh, so I'm not that far off. Um, I did post a video. Check out my uh, latest video. If I'm not mistaken, it's the newest one, uh, other than this live stream, of course, that shows a bit of my thoughts on large format watercolors. I am documenting the entire process from a meta perspective. So I'm not showing all of the painting process at all. I'm showing you maybe 10% of it, but I am talking about the different stages and kind of what I'm doing to deal with the unique challenges. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I will finish the video when I finish the painting. And the painting is around 70% done. Once I finish the painting, I'll have all the video materials. I'll talk a bit more about it. And I'll post it. It'll probably take about a month for the video to be out. The painting itself, I'll, I'll hopefully finish in about a week. A week more, I think it'll take. Um, <clears throat> it's an interesting process because it just takes time covering these large areas, doing multiple glazes over them. I don't think there's any necessarily specific tips other than like you don't have to merge everything together. It's okay to work in small sections. So when you paint this huge, you can isolate different sections to work on at your own pace in a very controlled manner and then move on to another section. One way to close off these sections is where the value changes. Where you have a change from a light to dark value is a good place to kind of border an area, work just on that, and it will feel seamless from afar and from up close, by the way, because there is a difference in value. It will feel kind of seamless. Even if there was no difference in value, it will feel quite seamless. Um, you don't have to mix everything together. That's the biggest, I think, insight for me. It just can work in different sections. It can work however you want. Um, but yeah, a lot of the challenges people kind of imagine even before they happen with the large water cores just don't come to be. You can just paint whatever you want, whatever size it is. There was lightning now. Ruth is going to bark soon, too. She hates that. She hates storms. Uh, Marjorie, this has been an enjoyable morning. You hear that? I wish I could say I have somewhere interesting uh, to go or do, but for everybody in the chat, this should inspire you. Have a brilliant day to one and all. Thank you so much. And thank you for being here. Uh, Mark, thank you so much. Uh, Jessica, video, is there any writing or is it all pictures the whole way through? No, there is writing. I've shown a bit of it. Um, not a lot, though. So most of the descriptions are something like this. You'll get like uh, two lines or so. Some of them are like this. You'll get like a short paragraph. It's basically a line or two. But some of them where I have more to say, let me find an example for you. Um, OK, so there is, for example, this one a bit more verbiage. Um, there are there are some of them have more of these. Some of them have no description. It's just a number of the car. If I don't have anything to say, I don't say it. Um, but most of them, yeah, most of them will be just this kind of two lines, two lines, um, with some having more text, a few having more text. Maybe I would say like 8% of it will have more text than that. Here, for example, I talk a bit more about the process, so you do see it. Um, this is not a how-to. This is more of a get inspired and kind of open it up, look at some stuff, feel good, go ahead and paint, um, more than a how-to. So yes, more pictures, more scans of the paintings than um, words. It's definitely not a how-to book, that's for sure. And there's a bit of a kind of conclusion uh, near the end that I want to leave for people who get it to read. Uh, it's very simple, straightforward. It's nothing too crazy. It's things I talk about, but yeah. 
Uh, it's okay. Thanks, uh, Marjorie. Good company. Uh, Black, I'm so happy to have been here for your book launch party. Congratulations. Wish you more success. Thank you so, so much, Black. Much, much appreciated. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Paula, it has been so much fun watching your excitement over this book. Yeah, and and you know, just in terms of it's a relief to finish a large project because I felt like at some point around 2021, I just took on a lot of projects I haven't completed. Now, it's okay. I'm not a... I'm not a completionist necessarily. It's okay to to jump ship, bail on a on a project if you just don't feel right now that you're in in it. But still, these were on the back of my mind, and they were taking up space. Um, and now that I've finished it officially, it's a space off. And I have this wonderful book to look at, and I can't wait for the actual not author copies to arrive, not not for review copies to arrive, because. Um, I'll sign a few and sell them and sell some directly, but like I just want it. It's almost <coughs> like a portfolio <coughs> for me to refer to to look at my own work because I don't. I like looking at older paintings, especially that I forgot about uh, that I like um, older paintings that I consider good, high quality, and this is a great way for me to have them all. I just forget, you know, it's somewhere in the folder or I sold it. You know, some of these I sold. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, John, thanks for another uh, great live stream, Liron, and awesome start for 2024. Have a wonderful weekend, my friend. Thank you for always inspiring me. Thank you so, so much, John. Really, really appreciate the kind words. Um, uh, Jessica, that's a really cool idea. Thank you so much. Gina, I always enjoy your videos. I like to be around my favorite artists. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. Before the storm will end our live stream inevitably, I think this is a good spot. Uh, to stop it, we went an hour longer than usual. Um, it's now 9 p.m. here. Uh, it's been a long week and a long day, uh, but somehow I got this uh, energy surge, which is really fun. Uh, so thank you so much for um, being here with me on this uh, on this live stream and and for supporting the book. Really means a lot. Um, Marjorie, congratulations, everyone! I'm so happy to have been able to attend this celebration. Thank you so much. I ask who's the bestest. I think the answer is me. That's the, that's the correct answer. But I'll say first you, then Ruth, then me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and yeah, that's it. If you want to get the book, all the links are in the description box. If you know of anyone who would enjoy it, anyone who's into watercolor, uh, who can just look at it, and get some inspiration once in a while. Um, I think it's a fun. I think it's a fun product. That's the thing. Um, so yeah, so with that, we'll wrap it up. Take care, keep creating. I don't think there is a video scheduled for Saturday just because this week's been busy. Uh, maybe I'll get something out. Maybe it will be next Tuesday for next week. Uh, but until next time, take care and thank you so, so much for being here for so long. Drop a like if you can on the video. I will talk to you.